between this year's leaves, last year's leaves, this generation of people and that generation. The interval is in some ways just as important, some ways more important, than what it's between. Hey everybody. Um, yep, the microphone's picking up my voice. Okay, so here we have a very different uh, kind of live stream than the ones I usually do. Um, so I've been running the channel for a couple years now, and my uh, my old PC uh, does a pretty good job, but it's showing its age. I built it about five years ago, and it's still good for most things, but um, uh, the kind of stuff I put it through for the sake of the channel uh, is just uh, uh, a little too much for it to handle. The the 8K video renders and the multiple live streams and uh, uh, and all of that. So uh, I decided it was time to put together a new system. So I saved up my uh, my pennies, lots of pennies, and uh, and here we go. And since I've been building computers for roughly 30 years now, I figured we would have some fun and um, I would do a live build for you. Uh, because why not? <laughs> There's nothing like taking a, an already potentially stressful and frustrating situation and then throwing yourself into a live stream to make it even more interesting. So, um, <clears throat> but modern components are, uh, are uh, much more cooperative than like in the old days when you'd have to, you know, configure motherboard jumpers and things like that. So, a um, little backstory on the... Hold on a second. Let me just turn on audio so that I can um, occasionally put on my headphones, make sure that I'm not... Uh, make sure I'm not talking to nothing here. Okay, so please tell me in the chat, which I can kind of see across the table, uh, please tell me in the chat if my voice is uh, at a good volume and uh, uh, nice and clear, not too much echo right now as I'm sitting uh, at the computer.
Sorry for the production issues. Uh, not normally set up for this kind of streaming, uh, so I had to move my I had to move my old computer into the kitchen because that's my streaming computer. And um, there, I can gesticulate. <laughs> uh, you can't see my face. Uh, I wish that I had multiple cameras set up, but I, I just don't have that kind of setup currently. Maybe at some point in the future, if I do um, more in-person streaming, I can set something like that up. In the meantime, you get to look at my hands and my gear. Um, so, anywho, wanted to build a new system, and normally what I do is I go to Newegg.com and I spec it out because Newegg's search features are much better than um, uh, than well, pretty much any other um, tech vendor website. So, like you can drill down as detailed as you want on the specs of the, of the hardware you're looking for. So I spec it out on Newegg and then sometimes Amazon has cheaper prices. Uh, occasionally a third party will have uh, a third, a fourth party will have um, uh, better prices. But anyway, I, I spec'd out what I wanted. And so there were some criteria that I was looking for. Um, it didn't have to be the absolute top of the line, but it had to be close to it because I needed it to be able to handle uh, large videos, uh, 8K resolution, and uh, I needed, well, so one of the projects that I've been working on, or one of the pet projects I've been working on for a while is um, using slow motion um, processing technology to smooth out uh, n not only uh, videos like the, the ex you know, explosion of Starship or whatever, but also to smooth out um, image sequences like the rotating Earth from, uh, from well, well, my Discover Epic uh, uh, rotating earth um, slow motion processing didn't turn out so well because there weren't enough images to uh, to create a smooth interpolation from but um, the Himawari 8 sequences and things like that um, so anyway one of the problems I ran into was video memory and uh, you know my old video card had I think four gigs it was a GeForce GT, it was an uh, EVGA GeForce GTX 970. Again, this was five years five years ago, um, and I wanted something with more video memory. Well, it turns out that the only video card, uh, unless you get into like the very expensive workstation grade video cards that are for you know professional video production studios and things like that, uh, the only video cards with 11 gigs of memory, which is what I, I didn't want eight gigs. I wanted as much as I could get. So 11 gigs of memory are the, um, well, pretty much the GeForce RTX uh, 2080 Ti. Uh, and I don't recall if there's a lesser variant that, that also has 11 gigs, but I'm pretty sure this was the only one. And so I was pretty much stuck with that. Um, which is fine because it is an amazing video card. And unfortunately, it comes with a, uh, a uh, you know, concordantly amazing price. <laughs> uh, and so this is, this is the great challenge. Um, you can get a really good system and it can you know it can cost you let's say a few hundred bucks for the processor a few hundred bucks for the video card and that's going to be a great system but if you want to take it to that next level if you want the RTX 2080 Ti or the Ryzen Threadripper third generation uh, it's effectively going to double the price of those components so um, I, I, I debated with internally for a while, whether I wanted to, uh, <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, let me look at the chat. Stupid question, what country do I live in? Um, that's not a stupid question. I live, cow and game, gamers, I live in the USA. I'm in North Carolina. As you may tell from my voice, I am, I am American. Uh, I don't sound like a North Carolinian because, well, I'm not from here. But uh, let's see. Tar Productions, good to see you. Thank you for coming. And Bru, Bru, Bruno's, Bruno's. No, I am not doing this naked. I have on, I wish you could see it, and that's why I wish I had multiple cameras. Um, I have on, I mean, I, I could lay myself on the table, but the table would break, and then you'd have uh, an excellent fail video to post on, on Fail Army. But, um, and I'd have... Um, psychiatric counseling for having destroyed all of my all of my components but no i wish you could see it i'm wearing my grumpy cat uh nope t-shirt it's it's very cool my mom actually made it i i i uh took a design that i found online and then she printed the shirt for me anyway grumpy cat nope uh it's not space related but it's really cool <laughs> um so anyway so I decided, I finally decided to, you know, YOLO, that I was going to uh, get the better components. I was going to get the 2080 Ti, I was going to get the Threadripper 3rd Gen, and uh, I knew it was going to cost me more than any other computer I ever built, but uh, it's also going to last me a long time, and it's going to be far more capable than, than any other computer I've ever had. It's going to be a powerhouse. Um, and maybe also double as a space heater. Um, hopefully not too much, though. So, um, I spec'd it out on Newegg. And then I also um, searched up all of the available equivalent items on Amazon to see who was cheaper. Uh, Newegg actually had the cheaper price on a few items, Amazon on some others. But then, uh, so then I decided to pull the trigger. I went ahead and I made my purchase of... Uh, all the components, uh, but there was a problem because it turns out the day before I pulled the trigger on my purchase, uh, there was this weird like $92 charge on my debit card from some Canadian e-commerce site or something, and my bank flagged it as suspicious activity, and they suspended my card, which means that all those purchases that I had just made were were stuck because the payments didn't go through and it was confusing because some of the payments looked like they went through and uh other payments so okay so somebody said unbox maybe i can work on unboxing while i'm talking uh some of the payments did go through and others did not so um you can't see my hat so i'll move the spacex hat so anywho, motherboard. Um, so I went back and forth with Amazon and Newegg. I tried a different payment method. Uh, well, first of all, I tried putting in my card information again. And uh, and uh, you know, it looked like it worked, but then it didn't work. Anyway, long story short, by the time all of this um, was ready to go, like by the time I got my payment methods all squared away, um, there were a couple items that were out of stock. Like Amazon didn't have the processor anymore, and Amazon didn't have the um, um, some other component anymore. And so what I had to do was go to different vendors. I got, let's see, what did I get? The, um, look at the list here, 318. From Amazon, I got the power supply, which is a, a Seasonic 850-watt 800, power supply, very well-reviewed, 80-plus platinum, which means it's energy efficient. Um, and I got the Asus ROG Strix GeForce RTX 2080 Ti video card from Amazon. I also ended up getting the uh, 
Asus Prime TRX40 Pro uh, motherboard, which supports the, uh, the Threadripper third gen C uh, CPUs. But then from Newegg, I got the Corsair Crystal Series case, which is this big guy here, which everything will be going in. And I got 128 gigabytes of uh, G skill memory, which is, let me look at the specs. Um, so it's 432 gig modules uh, for 128 gigs total of memory of DDR4 3200 PC4 25600 SD RAM. Um, so that's a ton of memory, and that that should uh, I, I I went so big because uh, again I'm processing very big files, and I'm gonna need it. So here we have the motherboard. And I know these uh, crinkles are probably tingling your ears right now, but um, let's see. Okay, they got something underneath. Let's set this over here. Manual. cables. So I haven't unboxed anything, obviously. I'm not an unboxing channel, so I'm not going to focus on, like, ooing and aahing over uh, the unboxing process, but um, I wanted to sort of do the reveal live, uh, the reveal of all the parts, so, because why not? We're all here, we're all quarantined, we can do this together. Hmm. Okay, so in the motherboard box, we've got serial ATA cables. We've got a, uh, let's see, you really can't see that, can you? We've got a little jumper adapter that plugs into the, uh, uh, the, case, um, the, the case headers, like for the uh, power light and the the you know, speaker and everything uh, and provides a standardized interface for that. We've got, what the heck is this? A, a small cable of some sort? I'm not sure what that's for. This is some sort of power cable for something. Hmm. So the thing with modern components is that um, like, like a motherboard is going to come with a lot more parts than you actually need. You're, you're not going to need all this stuff. But here we've got a couple little screws. We've got a bracket for something. I'm sure it's in the manual. And uh, a couple little standoff uh, screws for... Uh, for something. Again, I'll have to refer to the manual because there's some stuff in here I'm not familiar with and I don't want to uh, omit anything important. Um, and I'm sure that probably what I will have to do, because yes, I've been building computers for 30 years, but uh, probably what I will have to do is um, have an intermission at some point and um, and read the manual so that I get all my ducks in a row before it's actually time to uh, do the final assembly. So this here is the video card. Oh, and I, I missed a part of my story. I'm sorry for the sniffles, by the way. Um, it's uh, allergy season, but um, I missed a part of my story, and that is that the uh, the CPU. By the time I, I got all my payment methods situated, some of the items were out of stock, and the CPU was actually out of stock at Amazon, and it was out of stock at Newegg. So it's the Ryzen Threadripper third gen. 
So um, I looked for who had it in stock, and I saw that B&H Photo and Video did. Well, they're a reputable, reputable vendor. I've bought from them multiple times. So I went ahead and bought it from them. But a week later, it still hadn't arrived. And I was like, what the heck? Their site said that it was out of so out of stock, but my order said that it was in stock and sent to the and the order was sent to the warehouse. So um, I asked them. I was like, "What is going on? Why don't I have my my thing?" And this is a cute little package speed setup. Okay, plug it in and turn it on. Um, well, it turns out what happened was they were awaiting. Ver like verbal verification. I don't know if uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I should drink some coffee. Okay, this is a Velcro strap branded Republic of Gamers. That's nice. And lo and behold, the heaviest video card I have ever held. We'll get a better look at this once I take it out of its electrostatic discharge proof uh, baggie. So I'm gonna have to take care of these boxes or else they're gonna take over my space here. Anyway, so uh, B and H was waiting for verbal confirmation of, I guess, my existence. Just I don't know, um, because of uh, the big, the big uh, CPU purchase. Just FYI, this this CPU, just the CPU alone, is fourteen hundred dollars. Um, I I could have bumped it up to the. So this is the twenty four core. Uh, Ryzen Threadripper 3rd Gen. I could have bumped it up to the 32 core, but that one was $500 more expensive. Now, 500 bucks, that's the price of a, of a decent PC right there. Uh, I really didn't want to spend that extra money for, um, uh, y you know, w just because something was out of stock. And I knew it would have been a bit, you know, it would have been, um, I mean, there's more cores, 33% more cores or, or whatever, but um, uh, I still didn't want to um, spend the extra money. I was drawing a line in the sand. So anyway, fortunately, I was able to get a hold of B&H and uh, they put the order through and then the product was delivered a couple of days later. Because, yeah, my order still had been on the books with, uh, placed with Amazon, but they changed their delivery date from two days to like a month and a half. It wasn't going to arrive until late April, and then they amended that to like May. So I was like, screw that. I'm, I'm going to... Okay, so it comes in this weird little, weird little... Uh, plastic case thing and then underneath we've got a sticker we've got hmm interesting that's kind of cool I guess they figure you spend so much for the item they gave they give you a custom uh, uh, hex tool with like a, a THICC thick uh, like handle on it that's that's got the Ryzen AMD Ryzen Threadripper uh, branding on it. It's kind of cool. And then in the bottom of the box we've got the mounting bracket, which is what's going to lock it down to the motherboard. Very important. Big, bigly important. And then the CPU itself, let's see, how does this work? Hmm. 
This is quite a display piece. Never seen anything, any CPU packaging quite like it. Um, oh, I see. So this little spring-loaded thing comes. Okay, and here we have. All right. So it slides out of the box, sort of. And here we have, if I can uh, get the light off of it, Ryzen Threadripper 3rd Gen 24 core CPU. The thing is massive. It's the biggest CPU I've ever seen. Well, the biggest CPU chip I've ever seen. Back in the old days, we used to have, what were they, Pentium 2s? They were large, but um, yeah. And here we have the power supply should be nothing special. Now it's a very good power supply, but power supplies are kind of like uh, um, well, kind of like the power in your house. So long as they're working, nobody cares. Um, we've got some zip ties and some um, Velcro ties. Power cable. Some sort of plastic bracket for a 24 or a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so in it, yeah, 24 pin uh, uh, ATX power connector. Here we've got a bundle of cables with a nice little drawstring on it, like a D and D and a Dungeons and Dragons dice bag, and um, so here, let me show you this. Um, one of the big features I wanted with the power supply was full modularity. That is to say, I wanted it to be fully modular, so you don't have this huge bundle of cables hanging off the power supply. What you have is a series of plugs. And you can plug in whichever cables you want and only the ones you need. Um, that way you, you don't have a whole bunch of unnecessary cables cluttering your beautiful museum showpiece that is your computer. Those are nice, Those are nice bags. And yeah, and here we have all the all the cables for the power supply that are going to go to the motherboard and the uh, um, peripheral, the internal peripherals, the, um, the hard drives, and everything else inside the computer. set those off to the side all right now this here is our memory comes in a very fancy box um, component manufacturers manufacturers these days they really do like to showcase their uh, their products even in the uh, packages they get delivered in oh yes it comes with a little microfiber cloth branded Trident Z Royal that's that's nice um, so yes this is the G skill Trident Z Royal series of um, of memory chips and they are gorgeous you know I mean 
when you think computer memory, you don't usually think beautiful, but these are some, hey, look at that. It's a uh, webcam selfie. I have it hanging from my light in the kitchen, in the, in the kitchen eating area. So, um, <laughs> anywho. So, yeah, they've got this, like, crystal, uh, this crystal thing here. And um, they're RGB, so the, the video card is RGB. Asus uh, RS Inc. RGB, which is also what the motherboard has. It's Asus RS Inc. RGB, so they can communicate with each other. This is RGB, although it's not Asus RS Inc. I can still set it for whatever. So it's going to be a very co colorful computer once it's, once it's done. Hey, look at that. It was my head. Um, so these are, let me, let me get the, the specs right. Um, I got two one terabyte um, Samsung 970 Pro uh, SSD, uh, M.2 SSD cards. So with SSD, you can get like an SSD drive, which goes in a two and a half inch uh, drive bay or, you know, with an adapter bracket, uh, three and a half inch bay. Um, or you can get the M.2 card, which is much smaller, but goes into a special slot on the motherboard, an M.2 slot, which has a uh, much wider bandwidth and potentially much greater speed um, than the standard you know, serial, serial ATA interface that, uh, that your, um, uh, that your hard drives are going to connect to. So the reason why I got two identical SSD cards or SSD drives was because, uh, I wanted to run them in a, in a RAID zero striped array configuration, which means that you imagine you have one hard drive uh, full of data every time any data is accessed on that drive d -d 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 -d, your computer is you know jumping around to different memory positions on that drive if you have two drives that are striped the data is striped across both drives and so you're effectively able to access that data twice as fast because it doesn't have to jump around to a bunch of memory positions on one drive. It's actually able to pull from both drives. Um, it's not redundant, so there's no protection if one of the drives goes bad. But that's, I mean, that's normally the case if you just have a single hard drive anyway, except with a RAID configuration or with a RAID 0 array, uh, it's much faster. And I don't think I've ever actually run RAID 0 because I was never that, like, I, I never had that much need for, for speed. I mean, simply upgrading from old uh, platter drives, spinners as they're called, to an SSD, like an SSD hard drive, is going to give you a ton of speed. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, where, where have you been all my life? Um, but... Uh, and then and then upgrading to the M.2 is going to give you even more speed, and then striping those is going to give you even more speed. So that two gigabytes, the one plus one, the two gigabytes are going to be uh, by far the fastest two gigabytes I have ever owned. And then the last component is the uh, Corsair. I'm kind of Corsair centric. I have a Corsair keyboard. I currently have a Corsair case. The new case is also Corsair. Uh, I like their products. They're good and uh, they look good and they, they perform well. Uh, I haven't had any issues with them. And uh, um, because the cooling system, this so this is an all-in-one uh, liquid cooler for the CPU. So instead of the traditional uh, heat sink where you have the CPU and then you have a big metal apparatus 
on the top of it with, with cooling fins and a fan on it that blow air across the cooling fins to get the heat away from the CPU. Um, with the uh, liquid cooling, you have a cooling block that sits directly on top of the CPU and um, uh, and flows water through it. And then that water gets cycled. I don't know here, let me get it closer so you can see the picture. Um, so the water goes from the, uh, the cooling block through the pipes into the radiator or whatever the, uh, the, the uh, I, I don't remember what they're called, but the radiator unit uh, that the fans are blowing on. The water is cycled through there where the water is then cooled off and then it comes back to the CPU. But the point is that water can retain much more heat than uh, air. And so the water can then convey much more heat away from the CPU than air can. So um, some people say it's not really necessary. Um, uh, you know, that I could go with like a, a, a Noctua uh, air cooler and I would be fine. However, one of the things I'll be doing with this is rendering large videos that take many hours potentially to uh, to do. And when you're um, pro when you're producing a great deal of heat over an extended period of time, you really want to uh, uh, have a system that can continually flush heat away from the CPU over that extended period of time. And that's going to be liquid cooling. I considered doing a custom liquid cooling system, which look really, really cool, but um, they're also hundreds more dollars and I, I wasn't really sure that I needed that. I mean, it would be cool to have, but again, not sure it was really necessary. So here we've got our uh, RGB fans. Oh, and also because, oh yeah, right. So uh, also because the cooling system and the case uh, are both Corsair, the RGB software can talk to each other. And so I can uh, use the same software to control the LED lighting of, um, okay. So here we've got the radiator unit, and uh, this is all very slippery. I should put it back in the box until I need it. Here's the cooling block. Now, I am hoping, really, really hoping, that this cooling block I'm sorry that this that the uh, that the contact surface on this water block is big enough to fully cover the business surface of my CPU because it is a big CPU. Um, I guess we shall see. And I mean, like I read the reviews and people seem to think that it works great, but. I guess, again, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So, first things first. I guess we're well beyond first, but the next order of business would be to uh, get the motherboard in the case. Okay, so... Uh, let me remove some of this protective gobbledygook. All right, so here is our motherboard. We've got our uh, PCI Express slots for video cards here. Uh, we've got Hmm. Interesting. I think I may need to take this metal heatsink off in order to access the uh, the M.2 
uh, mounting ports. I mean the M.2, uh, whatever. So with, uh, I don't know if it's with modern CPU, uh, with modern motherboards, or if it's um, just with the, the Threadripper third gen series or what, but there's a new pattern of having uh, four memory slots on either side of the CPU uh, socket on the motherboard. It used to be that you would have the CPU like up in the corner somewhere and then there would be four or eight uh, memory slots off to the side rather than on either side of it, but it's fine. All right, let me see what people are saying in the chat. <laughs> Coarse hair keyboard, yeah, that's a, as opposed to a a sheep's wool keyboard, I guess. <laughs> uh, Snowcats, uh, what, what what sound was? Are you referring to? All right, let's see here. So, got to get this stuff out of the way. There's my weapon for defending myself from the raw power of this computer. There's even a story beside there's even a story behind the uh, the Gerber multi-tool. Um, uh, my Gerber was originally gifted to me uh, way back in the 90s by an Air Force buddy. And, um, and I used it for many years, but then, uh, it broke like one of the, one of the, uh, uh, the, the sides of the, like this whole side of the pliers broke off. So I contacted Gerber and thanks to their excellent lifetime warranty, um, they replaced it. No questions asked. They're like, uh, send us the old one. We'll send you a new one. And they sent me a brand new Gerber, like 20 years you know, 20 years later. So, um, let me see if I can figure out this case here. Uh, this case is the Corsair Crystal series. And so it's got these um, tempered glass uh, panels on every side, on the front, on the sides, on the top. Probably not on the bottom, but uh, let me take a look at the back here. It means it's going to be susceptible to fingerprints, but currently there's protective uh, plastic film on everything. Okay, so this is the... Here, let me tilt the back up so you can see it. I guess this is the back? Um, let's see. I'm a little puzzled. Hmm. Kind of doesn't look like the back. Maybe I'm. Oh, all right. It's the. That's the bottom. Hello. Okay. It came like on its back, so I was confused. That's the freaking. That's the bottom of the thing. All right. So let me tilt it. Tilt it up. It's heavy and doesn't have a lot of good gripping surfaces. There we go. Also, the. Uh, okay. So let me move this into view. So. Hey, it's my face. So the um, the power and uh, USB microphone, whatever, all the controls, including the RGB lighting controls, are on the top of the case, which is why I was a little confused because normally I, I'm I'm used to controls being on the front. So here, here we have the back of the case, which makes a lot more sense because I was like, how do you plug in the power? Where do all the interface ports go? All right, so what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and take the uh, panel off of this guy and lay it down so that you can see what I'm working on, which is why I put the camera up high like I did. There we 
Yeah. So in the past, all of the clear sided cases I've owned have been just cheap plastic. This is actually tempered glass. If I break it, it will shatter. And so um, I'm going to set this way over here out of the way. So there's no risk of me accidentally bumping into it or whatever, knocking it over. And then I'm going to set this like so, making sure not to knock anything off. All right. So um, we've got three fans on the front. We've got no fans on the top, but that's where our cooler is going to go. So uh, from your perspective, the case is actually upside down. Um, this surface here is the top. This is the front, this is the back, and this is the bottom. Um, yeah. uh, the power supply goes in this cage, basically. Uh, and I'm not sure if this cage comes... Uh, I, I presume I can take that off. Here, let me uh, get a screwdriver. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, boy. <coughs> this equipment isn't dusty, but allergies are getting me, so. All right. So, I clearly need to tidy up my workspace. I've got components flying all over the place. I don't want to risk knocking anything off. So, taco unicorn go away, power supply, motherboard. CPU, definitely want to protect that, so I won't put it on the edge. And then the almighty uh, 2080 Ti uh, GPU. All right. Now we should have room to work. So I'm going to take the, uh, before you do anything with a computer, you need power. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off this uh, power supply um, housing, whatever, this chassis here. Probably screwed on this side too. On the back. Take a look. It's not designed to come off. Let me see here. So there's a uh, there's an air filter on the bottom. Let me take that off. Get out of the way. Nope, that's just a metal metal grate.
uh, Gradia. Gradia says that I should put the uh, the um, processor, the M2s, and the memory in before I put the motherboard in the case. Uh, that is an option. Um, you know, you get a little more room to work with when the motherboard is not yet in the case. And then, of course, put the cooling in after you put it in the case, because that's... Um, but uh, not quite there yet. I may, I may do that, but um, not quite there yet. So, how to get to Sesame Street. No, how to get the power supply one, two, three. Okay. Hmm. All right. I think I need to remove these three screws. What I should really do, if I were being responsible, um, would be to read the, uh, the case manual. It would tell me exactly what I need to do. However, I am too prideful and uh, I want to pretend like I can figure it out all, figure it out all by my lonesome. But if this if this doesn't work here, then then I'll definitely uh, consult the manual because uh, one reason why I'm not I'm not going for the manual is because it's uh, not very entertaining. So. I don't want there to be too much dead air, or else I'll lose all my viewers. We can't have that. Ah, look at that. So, I took off this bracket, and it does, in fact, look like that's how I'm going to get my CPU. I'm sorry, my uh, my power supply in there. Um, I just had to remove a few screws to do it. Got 850 watt power supply, hybrid mode. Hmm. We're gonna put the fan down because that's where the that's where the vent is. Um. Ooh, that's a tight one. Man, that uh, power supply chassis is really large and it's preventing me access to the uh, I wonder is there access from the back dun, dun. I'm not seeing it you know what I'm gonna consult the manual one second I'm also going to remove the uh, um, the the other side of the case, the the tempered glass panel on the. Uh, as you're looking at the front, it's going to be the um, right side because there's stuff back there I need to get at, and I'm going to mount my hard drives back there because they mount like behind uh, the motherboard just to keep them out of sight. Here's what I'm looking at. We've got cardboard 
on one of these three and a half inch hard drive trays. Ooh, that's a toughie. Okay, so these are little pins that screw into the hard drive and then you, uh... all right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a little bowl and put some of these screws in so I don't lose them. Losing screws is no good. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of room to distinguish between different sets of screws, but uh, how does that sound? <laughs> anyway. Aha, you push it, pull it up, and then boom. I see said the blind man. Okay, so here we have motherboard doodads. We've got sort of pseudo velcro ties. We've got zip ties. We've got lots of screws. That's good. All right, now, where did that... I lost one of the... Uh, Lost one of the screws for the three and a half inch hard drive chassis, and I think it went down that little hole right there. The question is, where does that hole go? If I tilt it this way. Definitely in there. Hmm. All right. Well, that's that's something that I'm going to have to remedy before I put everything together because uh, I don't want a loose coffee. I don't want to loose. Uh... So what I lost was one of these little pins. If you can see. Um, in the uh, three and a half inch hard drive chassis, which I won't be using, but on this side there's a little metal pin. On this side, the pin popped out because, uh, well, because I applied pressure in the wrong direction. So, Look at that. Came right out. Gravity never fails. Okay. So. Now, let's take. Let me see. Do, do, do. Let's take that one guy's advice. Pardon me if I don't remember who said what. And assemble some components on the motherboard, first and foremost. All right. So, I'm pretty sure well, here, let's, see, let's take a look at the motherboard manual and it will tell us. Yeah. 
What I'm looking for is the diagram. Okay. Yeah, so per the di per the diagram um both of the m.2 uh both of the m.2 uh receptacles are underneath this this plate. So I'm going to remove that. It's a it's a heat sink. Hmm, it's a long screw. There we go. See, it's longer than okay. I didn't actually need to fully unscrew the screws. I can put these back in because they've got like screw threads at the tip of the screw. That's way too small for you to see, but they've got through screw threads at the tip of the screw, and then they've got like just blank shaft for the rest of the way. So the screw will stay in its hole on the little heat spreader plate. Um, but not threaded, so it's just loose, but it's staying. Ah, I see. So, um, on the bottom of this heat plate, they've got, uh, I guess, thermal adhesive pads or whatever that stick to your M.2 drives, which is cool. M.2 drives. So, now that I took that plate off, you can see, make sure I've got a firm grip here, you can see um, this is where, there, this is where one video card goes, if I had a second video card this is where it would go, and in between we've got one, two locations for the M.2 drives. So, the question is, does the M.2 drive come with any screws? There's a manual. There's the drive itself. sits right on the top there and then it gets pressed down Boop. all right so I will set the drives there and then I'll locate the screws to uh, secure them so they don't really go into a slot per se they just kind of rest on top of these leads here and then you screw them in place and there's a, a, a foam like a foam rubber pad underneath them that holds them uh, off against the motherboard, I guess, for for um, so the the airflow can you know moves can circulate around them and keep them cool. screws. Here they are.
I'm just putting these little pins back in the hard drive chassis that I won't be using. At least it won't have a hard drive in it. I may keep it in the case because it's behind the motherboard and out of sight. So there's no particular reason not to put it back in. Um, nope, these are great big screws. These are rubber washers. These are long screws. These are weird sort of standoff screws. And here we have tiny screws. So it looks like what I need is probably going to be a silver, well, I guess they're all black, but it's going to be a longer but thin screw. Um, see hmm. I'm gonna put too much pressure on these standoff screws I wonder you know that is a small hole but maybe actually these standoff screws are what I need maybe Seems awfully big to me. No, I don't think so. All right. Again, maybe the um, maybe the manual specifies which screws I need. Because what what it looks like I need is a a long a longish screw that is quite thin. And these are fat screws. So I've never actually like I have a, a computer in my house that belongs to a buddy of mine that has an M.2 drive in it, but I personally have never used any M.2 drives. Um, tell you what, let's take these out and figure out what screw we need. Um, Two slot bundled bracket. Oh, right. Yeah, this is why I couldn't find the screw because uh, they don't use like I, I need to use a bracket to install the uh, M.2 uh, modules, which would be located over here in this pile. I knew I uh, left some stuff inside. All right, so let's see if they have a picture of this bracket. Probably not. B C B C M dot two. M.2 
that to installation. All right, table of contents. 211. Let me hold the manual so you can see me flipping pages. I don't even know how many people are watching. I'm just doing my thing here. Yeah, take that off. Screw in those thingies. Terribly informative, but let me take a look at what the box has for me. There they are. I think that's what I need right there. It's not actually a bracket. The bracket they were talking about might have been the, uh, the this metallic, uh, this heat sink thing. The heat spreader. Okay, so here we have scissors. Here we have two tiny little screws and uh, two tiny little standoff thingies. And those are what I'm going to use to mount my uh, M.2s. Alright, Give it a little, give it a little bit of a twist. Don't want it loose. There we go. Now we can. It is a slot. It sticks right in there. Okay, my bad. I have actually in, uh, inserted my friend's M.2 drive in his computer, but um, it was a long time ago. This is a tiny little screw. I'm going to need a precision screwdriver for that in a second. Hopefully this is fine enough. It's a kit that my mother-in-law got me once, um, but it proved useful. So there you go. Some moderately precision work here. There we go. I say as I slip. No worries. Oh. 
Okay, M.2 is firmly in place. I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, adhesive, uh, remove the, um, the uh, whatever, the film from the adhesive on the bottom of the heat spreader. And it goes like this. Hopefully, where's my, where's my thingy? There it is. There we go. Screwing it down. Yeah, I was hoping that I wasn't misaligned because then I'd have to peel the adhesive back up off the M.2 drives, which would have been not the greatest. There you go. Um, M.2 is installed. Now, as far as the um, as far as the CPU, in the world, I can't see. There's a case in the way. Oh, a really long twist twist tie thing. All right. Okay, so the CPU. So uh, CPUs, there's there's different types of uh, connect of connections that CPUs have. Um, in the old days, and maybe even the new days, I don't know, depending on the CPU, um, they would have lots of different lots of little pins on the bottom. This uh, here we go. This thread ripper. CPU has flat contacts. It has flat little little copper contacts on the uh, bottom of the CPU that uh, uh, just set down on top of the motherboard socket. Okay. One, two, three. How fortuitous. Looks like this um, largest hex or this largest Torx bit will uh, will work for um, okay open three two one. I'll do what it says. The largest Torx bit on this little cheapy screwdriver thing will fit for the CPU. Okay, three, two, whoop, whoop, give me my bit. to uh, hold on to the bit there. Okay. This ro this rotates up. And plastic cover that slides out. Discard that. And then there's another plastic cover that that uh, um, protects the leads. Remove that. 
And then the way the way CPUs work is you have to orient you have to set them down in a specific orientation. And so on the on the bottom of the CPU, you see. Uh, see whoop, whoop, if I can get centered here. I don't know if you could, if it's in focus for you, but in this corner, there is a little uh, triangle, a little gold triangle that indicates the one pin on the CPU. And so if I look on the socket, um, if I look carefully on the socket, hmm, where's one? Where does it indicate? <clears throat> one, two, one, two. Okay, there's only one way you can insert it. Um, there's only one way you can insert it because there's also notches. I don't know if you can see the notches. Here, let me. Um, there's one notch and then two notches. So there's only one way you can insert the, uh, or there's only one way you can mount the CPU in there. Um, and so we're just going to drop it in uh, very carefully, making sure trying to hold it by the edges and not. Put our finger oils on the uh, processing surface. OK, so if I recall correctly, there was a little cleaning cloth that came with the memory. Here, I'm going to pull that out. I'll set the CPU down here. I did wash my, my hands before this, but we all have finger oils that are there regardless. So I did, I didn't like get my paws all over this, but um, uh, I did kind of touch it with the edge of my finger pad and we want to make sure that the, that the, uh, um, the top of the CPU is very, very clean. Um, and what I'm going to do is, woo, I got a firm grip on the CPU. It's my phone that was in jeopardy. What I'm going to do is take a picture of the uh, serial number because once I get the CPU laid down I'm not going to want to move it so let me see if that worked hmm I guess one of those is the serial number I don't know but those are the only numbers on the CPU. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set this in the socket. And so the one pin is right here in this corner. And based on the orientation of the notches, the one pin is going to go in this corner of the socket. And I just drop it right in. And then Put this bracket down, and then lay this down, and then we close it with one, two, A bit. This isn't like the perfect size bit, but it's it's getting the job done. So uh, I won't take the time to try to go track down my other 
nicer uh, screwdriver set. That should be well and truly secured. All right, so there's the CPU. Now for the memory. We've got, um, so the way modern dim sockets work is you've got uh, the uh, this side is static it doesn't move and then this side contains clips the memory you put it in you rock it down and then you tighten the clips Okay, I got people yelling at me. What's going on here? Hold on. So explain to me why I am messing up. Torque wrench that came with the processor. Ah, it's true, it did come with a torque wrench, didn't it? So Snow Kittens mentioned something about this is going to be a long stream. Uh, I'm doing what I can. I uh, so there are some there are some components here that um, where's that? There are some components here that are new to me, despite my long years of. Uh, experience what the heck and um, every build is a little different because normally my builds are spaced out by a few years so there we go that works very nice Lo and behold, interesting. Huh. So uh, that's news to me. It is in fact a torque wrench. It tells you when to stop. Okay, well. Learn something new every day. Newfangled tools for newfangled uh, computers, huh? It's not so much a matter of, um, of not paying attention, it's that, well, uh, if I stop what I'm doing and read the chat, then it, it just lengthens the process, lengthens, lengthens the process. No, I've got a good feel for, um, for torque and electronics, and I, I, I wouldn't have over tightened it. In fact, it was a little under tightened. Um, but thanks to the thread ripper torque wrench, it is now exactly the right, uh, the right tightness. So 
So where is that CPU manual? Because there's a bracket that came with the CPU There's a bracket that came with the CPU that goes there, but I don't th I don't know if I need it. And so I'm going to try to find the CPU manual to see what this bracket is for, because I'm not going to be using an air cooler um, with the CPU. But I don't know if the if that bracket is required. So uh, you have to give me a moment to find that manual. There it is. Sheesh. And of course, every manufacturer they have their own little, their own little uh, stickers that they want you to put all over your your computer, like it's a NASCAR computer. Tighten one, two, three until the wrench clicks. And as, as usual, um, the instructions are generic and incomplete. Uh, they don't actually mention, so this is, these are the instructions that came with the processor. And they, the instructions are for like five different socket types. Uh, why they couldn't, like, I mean, are they really saving that much money by consolidating like five different processors onto the same instruction sheet. Um, but if I skip all of the, uh, pro all of the uh, socket types that don't apply to this one, um, all it says is, uh, you know, use the torque wrench to loosen the, loosen the screws in the designated order, lift up the socket and the carrier frame holder. Um, And uh, they don't mention that bracket, but just for just for P's and Q's, let me make absolutely sure that this is seated correctly, because the CPU is one thing that I do not want to. Because if if anything is is not quite not quite perfect. Um, the CPU will be the first to go because uh, it generates the most heat and uh, it's a fragile component and it's doing most of the work. So Okay. 
So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the CPU and we're going to slide it into the bracket as they instructed me to do. This is why it's what. No. Okay, hold on. Let me revisit the instructions because that stupid bracket uh, isn't big enough. Like, is uh, the 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 uh, the bracket extends beyond the edges of the CPU? Lift up socket lid and carrier frame holder then remove socket protector. Do not touch pins on socket. Hold by carrier, hold by carrier frame, and slide down until processor clicks into place. Aha! So, my bad. Um, normally, when I build computers, things are quite straightforward. Um, the systems, like, um, the, the way the systems are put together really hasn't changed much in a very long time. But this little orange pro uh, carrier frame is uh, something new to me. So that is my bad. And whoopsie. And uh, I will now correct my mistake. So this little, let's see here, this little carrier frame actually was on the CPU when I took it out of the box, and I thought it was just for shipping, but in fact, I was supposed to insert it uh, into the computer in this little carrier frame. So... All right, let me just buff it up a little bit. I don't like the fact that I can't directly hold the CPU by the sides because uh, this carrier frame is kind of flimsy and uh, I'm a little bit uncomfortable um, uh, holding it. Okay, so this just slides right into there, which makes more sense. And then this slides down, I mean, rotates down, boom, and holds the CPU in place. So there. Now I am cooking with grease. That's the correct way to install the uh, Threadripper 3rd Gen CPU. And then close one, two, three. Well, so Roberson, uh, it may not be necessary or it may be necessary. Uh, I mean, it could be that that little orange bracket makes sure that the CPU is exactly perfectly aligned with the pins, in which case that could be extremely important. Um, or it could just be for convenience. I I'm not sure, but the instructions tell me to use it, so I don't want to countermand them. I don't want to risk it. Um, There, that's a cool little, cool little torque wrench. All right, the memory. Memory's easy. It's really nothing to memory. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four. The only, the only consideration regarding the memory is which slots you need to insert it into. So um, I've got 32 megabyte modules here. There's four of them. Uh, for a total of 128 gigs, 32 gigabyte modules, uh, for a total of 128, but I need to insert them into specific slots, and I need to consult <clears throat> consult the motherboard manual to know which slots to, uh, to insert. Uh, 
two dim slots, page one five. Okay, dim A1. Okay, recommended memory configurations. D1, C1. A1, B1. So the outer, the every other, every other dim slot from the outer edge. These two and these two. Fine. One, two, three, four. And what you do is you hold the phone, get seated. Mm. Okay, that looks correct. So what you do is um, uh, you, you slide it straight down you get it lined up, you slide it straight down, and then on the static side, the side that doesn't have the clip, you press that down, and then you press the clip side down, and you make sure that they're even. It used to, have, it used to be that you would have clips on both sides, but they don't do that anymore. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's uh, good info. All right. So um, I just discovered that the orientation is opposite on each side of the CPU. So the notch goes on a different side. Uh, that's why you don't. That's why you don't force things when you're building. When you're building computers or working with electronics, you uh, you can be firm. But if it resists you in an unexpected way, see what's going on before you really try to force it. Unfortunately, sometimes certain electronics requires you to, to force it and get really physical, which I'm very uncomfortable with, but uh, say la vie. All right, so we've got our M.2 drives. We've got our Threadripper third gen CPU. We've got our memory. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it before we put it in the, uh, in the case. supply. Oh, you know what? Look at this. I think, uh, I think I need to put the power supply in from the bat, from the, uh, the right side of the computer. That's where it's open. Looks good to me. That's much easier than trying to go in from that that uh, way on the front side. my case stuff.
see Sonic. Okay, yeah. All right, so I've got my little my little baggie with um, zip ties and whatnot for the uh, uh, for the power supply. Uh, reality check, looking at the power supply to make sure the fan is down, and it is. I'll also take this filter and slide it back into place. So Chris V asks what the other set of RAM slots are for. Uh, the motherboard supports up to eight uh, SD RAM cards, eight, eight RAM cards, memory cards. And um, I'm currently using uh, four 32 gig cards for a total of 128 gigs. Um, I could use eight 32 gig cards for a total of 256 gigs of memory. Uh, I don't know if the motherboard supports more than that. It's quite possible, but um, it was a little bit beyond my budget. I didn't need more than, a, I mean, I, you could always use more, but um, Like I said, you have to draw the line somewhere. Okay, so now I'm, sc I'm screwing the power supply into place. At the bottom back of the computer. And after I do this, I'll go ahead and put that uh, bracket back in place uh, that I had removed earlier unnecessarily. So, you know, uh, even for even for a seasoned veteran, uh, every build is a learning experience. You uh, like so long as I mean, if you're dealing with hardware that like the same hardware that you've built multiple times, like if you're building, you know, Dell workstations for a company or something. OK, fine. Everything, you know, things can get very routine. But if you're building a home computer, uh, a gaming system, um, then you're going to be using components that you've that you've never worked with before and there are going to be uh, things that you haven't seen before and so um, you know every build is a learning experience I'm going to flip this around which is good you should always be learning whether it's space or computers or whatever Mathematics, history, even uh, the history of communicable diseases <laughs> might be useful. Um, we should always be learning. Yes. I knew that bracket didn't look like something I should remove, but you live and learn. All right, I'm going to start with this screw. start with the top because it wants to slip down. Get one screw done and then the rest are easy.
make a coffee break. <laughs> I got my coffee here. I can sip on it as needed. So um, I thought I configured uh, some of my music to play uh, quietly in the background and to um, sort of mute itself when I spoke. Um, is that is that okay? Is the music at a good volume and everything? Uh, please let me know in the chat. Finally fixing my mix up earlier with this bracket. So, don't know if you can uh, see it from that height, and I'm not. I don't want to lift this whole big case up there. But um, there are screw posts strategically located. Well, there there are standoffs, and then this is a, a post that sticks up through the motherboard, uh, strategically located around the um, uh, around the the case where you you know, where you mount the motherboard to. And those go into specific uh, screw holes on the motherboard. And it's a very good idea to, to look at the motherboard and see which screws you actually need. Um, so the motherboard's gonna be oriented, gosh, this thing is heavy. The motherboard's gonna be oriented like this. And, uh, and so we've got one, two, three, one, two, that post is going to stick up through, one, one, one. Okay, so the existing uh, posts that they have on the, mud, on the case from the factory are standard. They're, they're um, the standard ones that, um, uh, like that my motherboard needs. So I don't need to adjust those at all, but you want to make sure because um, Okay, so in the past like If we look here at the back panel of the motherboard uh, if I get the light off of it. Okay, so here's all the ports on the back of the motherboard um, in the past You would have a metal bracket that would go over this uh, that would uh, you would sort of mount in the case but on this one it looks like it's integrated the uh, the, the, the bracket is built onto the motherboard or built onto this this port cover thing and so it doesn't look like I will need to uh, um, do anything there plus like if I look in the in the uh, motherboard box, which is somewhere. Yeah, it didn't come with a bracket, so don't need a bracket. But what I do need, to, what I do need to do is preemptively remove the, uh, uh, the card slot covers. So motherboard goes in here like this and you've got these card slots on the back side that uh, have covers on them and I want to remove the ones that my video card will be uh, occupying. So here we get to take a look at the video card. This 
is one heavy video card. Oh my gosh. So, and it's thick, super thick. It's got three fans and um, as far as ports on the back, one, two display ports, one very tough ugh, HDMI, a tiny little, hmm, is that USB-C? No, no, no. I don't know what that is. And uh, another HDMI. So a couple of display port ports, a couple of HDMI. <laughs> Was that some loud plastic? Uh, okay. All right. So this is going to go in like this. And so if we look at the motherboard, um, let's, what's our orientation here? It's going to go in like this. And so from the, from the PCI Express slot, it's going to extend down two, uh, it's going to take up two uh, rear slot positions, and it's actually going to occupy a third slot, uh, uh, but it doesn't need it to be open. So, so all I need to do is know where the first slot is, and that's going to be It's going to be these two, I think. And I'll, I'll see soon whether I'm correct or not. And it's, if I'm incorrect, it's no biggie. These are designed to be removed or, or put back into place as needed. pressure on. This can be tricky depending on how tight the case is. Uh, also there's that, there's that post. Uh, so what I'm doing now is lining up the screws and then there's this one post in the middle that sticks up through the screw hole, um, which makes it easier to, and that's actually a cool feature. Uh, almost as if these hardware manufacturers uh, know what's involved in building systems and then provide the tools to make it easier on us. But, one, but with that, that post in the middle that sticks up through the, uh, the motherboard, it holds the motherboard's orientation in place. So you can, uh, like because previously you would have your, your bracket on the back and it would have like a spring spring-loaded effect to it and it would uh, push your motherboard out of alignment so you'd have to put pressure on the motherboard to keep it aligned while you were screwing it in it was kind of a pain all right so here we have uh, a handful of screws we need to put in you know what let me see I think I may have a more magnetic, um, I know you do need to be careful with magnets around computers, but uh, I, I do have a screwdriver with a slightly more magnetic tip that will hold onto these screws and hopefully will keep me from uh, losing them. Okay, what's the chat doing? Rocket PC. Now, when I was trying to set up my, my, my workspace here, my streaming whatever uh, setup, uh, I had my Saturn V rocket uh, along the table right there, but I decided that 
um, it would be in the way and uh, that uh, I, it wasn't wasn't that that what wasn't that important for for this this stream's purposes but I'll put the rocket on display later so we've got one two And you want to make sure the motherboard is very well secured because it can actually, uh, uh, especially if you've got heavy things hanging off the motherboard like video cards, and this is a super heavy video card, and um, uh, heat sinks, if you're doing heat sinks, which I won't have a heat sink, but um, uh, it can actually cause the motherboard to warp and can damage the uh, electrical leads on the motherboard over time. lost count but this should be the last screw <laughs> okay so we don't need this big uh, ESD bag anymore so if you're not if you're not familiar with um, computer components, the silver bags uh, protect the component inside from electrostatic discharge, like sp uh, like um, uh, static electricity sparks or anything like that, because um, sparks are high voltage and can damage sensitive components. So, and a lot of static is generated when you move things around and there's a lot of movement involved in the shipping process. So, um, all right, so what next? Uh, the video card we can save until later. What, we, what I really wanna do is get the, um, what I really wanna do is get the cooling in place for the, well, I've gotta plug in the power to the motherboard and I've also gotta get the cooling in place for the, uh, uh, CPU. Ooh, that's a longy. So this surface here is the top edge. It's it's the top surface of the uh, of the computer of the case, rather whatever. consideration when you're building a computer unless you, unless you don't care at all about well so let's let me rephrase another big consideration when you're bidding, when you're when you're building a computer is the cable management where you put your cables where you route them and um, the re well the reasons that's important is uh, first and foremost, airflow. You want to make sure that your computer isn't a mess of cables that are going to prevent the air from flowing around inside and cooling off your components or carrying the heat away from your components. Uh, and number two, aesthetics. If, if you don't mind having a rat's nest of a computer, then okay, fine. But uh, most people who build computers these days want to make them pretty. So, 
All right. So um, I'm going to pull out the old cooler system here. So in order to, um, so that I needed to get a very specific uh, uh, form factor of cooler <coughs> in order to fit in this case because of the, um, the way this case is laid out, I needed, I wanted to use the, the top uh, panel here or the top fan mounts for my, uh, for my cooling unit. And I needed a very specific size of fans. They have like the two different sizes. Uh, I needed the slightly smaller one. Um, so, let's see here. So many bags. All right. So here we have it. This is the uh, radiator block, whatever they call it, and this is the water block, <clears throat> which will go on the CPU, and uh, again, hopefully that's big enough. Uh, and I am definitely going to read the instructions for this because um, I've installed lots of uh, Fan coolers, heat sinks, and fans. Never installed a uh, water cooling system before, even an all in one one, which is easy peasy. Um, so, let's see, we got some sort of. We've got a, a, USB, a USB micro cable. I'm not sure what that's used for. Let me. Oh, wow, how weird. I can actually hear the liquid um, sloshing around inside the uh, cooling unit. And so I hear, I see here on the, um, uh, on the cooling, on the water block, there's actually a micro USB plug. So I'll have to read and see what that's for. I'm sure that somebody in the chat uh, is already well familiar with the process of installing AIO coolers, AIO water coolers, but uh, it's the first time for me, so we'll see how this goes. Should be flawless. That is a lot of screws. A lot of screws. Some sort of brackets. And another, another sort of bracket. Maybe it's uh, different brackets for different CPUs. All right. So give me a moment and, um, I'll tell you what, I'll take a, a should I should take a break now. I'll just um, switch to, uh, I'll, I'll mute the microphone so my music can take over. Take a, a short little break and uh, read the manual here. Maybe drink some more coffee.
So uh, I got a little confused because um, the first, well, by default, the, or by, from the factory, the uh, Corsair cooling block is installed with an Intel mounting bracket. And uh, in the first section of the manual is uh, for an Intel mounting bracket. I got a little, got my wires a little crossed and uh, I forgot that I have an AMD CPU. So uh, I'm now looking at the AMD instructions. Um, pushing both sides into the slot on the pump until secure. Hmm. Okay. Remove. All right. So looking at, this is unwieldy. This thing is just large and in charge here. Um, so it's got this plastic protecting the, the, um, uh, the thermal, the thermal adhesive on the copper plate. You can see it there, the thermal adhesive on the copper plate. Uh, 
but in order to remove the mounting bracket I've got to take that plastic off and then okay there it goes it's starting to give a little bit ah yes okay with one half and the other half. that's the Intel mounting bracket now I want the uh, AMD mounting bracket Sorry, you couldn't see what I was doing. There. Okay. Putting on the correct mounting bracket. Um, now let me, let me put this protective cover back on so that we don't get thermal adhesive everywhere. Or I'll just set it there gently because the, that cover is for the Intel bracket. It's not going to fit properly on the AMD. Okay. AMD bracket. Uh, fans and radiator preparing the mounting bracket. Hmm. Golly. AMD screw clips. Okay, there's a lot of hardware that came with this. Let's take a look at what we got. I don't have anything else in my bowl, so. Let me move this case a little bit farther. So, the uh, Threadripper third generation is very new. It's only been out for a few months, and uh, as a result, not a heck of a lot of information about it, uh, including instruction manuals and things like that. So, um, okay, in install fans and radiator. Radiator, that's what, I think that's what I called it, a radiator. Um, So the radiator gets bolted to the top of the case, which will be along here. And then the fans. Uh, for best cooling performance, they recommend mounting the fans as air intake. So air coming in past the radiator through the fans into the case, which would mean that uh, Uh, I would need to decide what to do with these three front case fans. Hmm. Okay. I'll pop up the chat window so I can see uh, what all you master PC builder experts are uh, telling me. AMD and screw clips. Gosh. So what's got me puzzled is I'm looking at my I'm looking at my CPU socket. And uh, yeah, Roberson, I I have I have tubes of um, Arctic silver and other silver thermal paste. Um, but uh, considering that this this is coming with thermal adhesive, I'll, I'll probably just use use that. And Chris V, the silver thermal adhesive, oh my gosh, it is like silicon paste. It 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 gets on everything. Like you've got to be very careful because it just gets everywhere. If if um, I mean it wipes off easily, but. Uh, uh, it's very, very fine 
you know, smooth granularity because it's intended to create a, a like a, a conductive, a seamless conductive surface between the CPU and the, and the heat sink or, or the water block. Gradia. This is um, the cooler I've got. Is the um, the 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 specs are listed in the video description. It's the um, Corsair H100i RGB Platinum, all in, all in one water cooler. Well, I I tried to do all the research I could. And um, there were eyewitness reports, as it were, of, um, okay, so clips. I'm looking for clips. This is the key. I need clips on the CPU bracket. Click this thing, too. It's not looking helpful. There's nothing. Nothing at all. No clips, no... Uh, um, no screw holes. I mean, there's there are these four screw uh, screw holes that correspond with the screws on this bracket here, whatever this is for, which I presume is for holding a uh, uh, where are we? Which I presume is for holding a, a fan of some sort, of a heat sink. I don't know. Uh, the CPU instructions didn't mention it. Um, so maybe, maybe this cooler won't work, uh, despite the fact that people claim to have used it with, uh, Threadripper third gen, uh, unless I'm an idiot and misinterpreted their, um, their statements and they were in fact referring to Threadripper second gen. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately... If the cooler doesn't fit, then I'm not firing up this CPU uh, during this stream. So I'll have to get a definitive answer on that. Um, or I may be, I may have to defer, defer this until later. And if, if so, probably what I'll do is just, uh, uh, um, do a, like a reveal video and not make it a live stream. But uh, anywho, let's see. Install the pump unit. Align bracket with the stock AMD mounting clips. See, that's the thing. So it wants me to use these little... Here, let me show you. It wants me to use these little... Um, these little screw bracket... These little screw clip things... Uh, which will then hook onto the bottom of the AMD CPU clips, but those don't exist on this uh, CPU socket. Not like, you know, the, the traditional CPU sockets I'm used to working with. So it really does look like this, um, really does look like I don't have the right mounting hardware for this. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <sighs> okay, so I apologize to everyone in the stream because I'm an idiot. Yes, that's right. You heard it right here. Raw space is an idiot because look at this. All right, so there's Intel, there's AMD, and then there's AMD TR4. Son of a gun. So, um, yeah, and that's why they have these, ah, man, so if I weren't doing the live, here, let me gesticulate, if I weren't doing the live stream, then I would probably have noticed, gee willikers, there are these mounting brackets which have holes that roughly approximate the uh, positions of the, uh, uh, that bracket that came with the CPU. Well, guess what? 
I do have the right mounting hardware. So, um, okay, remove the integrated Intel mounting bracket. Done, except now I need to remove the old-timey AMD mounting bracket. <clears throat> Sometimes it is a pain that every generation of uh, of hardware has like new new properties and new requirements and whatever. Okay, so that's going to go like that. I need the fat ones to be on the right side as I'm holding it like this. Noctua. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Noctua is very good. Noctua pretty much makes the best uh, heat sinks and fans, or particularly fans. Their fans are amazing. However, um, Noctua doesn't make water coolers, and that's what I needed. So there we go. Look at that. Bloody amazing. All right. So now, with these brackets, they are in the correct orientation to fit on my weird ass CPU socket. So let me read ahead a little bit. Okay. Uh, TR4 standoff screws. Hmm. They have screws on each side. There's a tall side and a short side. And then that's going to mount to here. Let me just make sure. Okay. Whoop. All right, there we go. Now, so if I were to do a second build, I would know exactly what to do. Oh, all right, these things don't want to thread from across the table. No, it is not. All right, so let me make sure I got the right thread pitch here. Golly gee, this thing is it's being difficult. Okay. All right, so we've got different standoff types here. <laughs> uh, here, I'll, I'll try to show these to you. Um, we've got uh, the one on the one on top has a short, fat uh, screw post on one side, and then a long, thin screw post on the other side. And then the one on the bottom has long, thin screw posts on both sides. Um, so apparently I was using the wrong one. They have everything just jumbled together, so.
that's the wrong thread pitch. That's obviously not the right one. So what I can do is set these aside so that they don't screw me up. And this short fat one isn't right, pretty sure. So it must be this medium one. circumstances you would screw in butter but if you did it would be like this oh Dale I have excess hardware dating back 25 years uh, I need to get rid of it <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect pitch, as it were. It's nothing like assembling a computer with pliers. Just putting a little extra tension on the uh, standoff screws. locksmith tray yeah. yeah that would be good if I like if I if if um, PC building was my was my job I mean well it used to be I mean I used to be IT hardware support but um, uh, if PC building was what I did day in and day out then yeah I would uh, uh, probably have a, a better setup for keeping little parts organized However, um, I only do this every once in a while, so but let's take all these unnecessary brackets and get them out of the way. So this is Intel, and these are Intel. I should get a Sharpie and write Intel on it. It's not like I'm ever going to use this cooling unit for any other system. I mean, there's a limited use in, in keeping extra hardware. I mean, you can keep it, but chances are, unless it's a standard component that gets used in all sorts of different systems, if it's specialized, like the Intel mounting bracket for the H100i RGB Platinum Corsair AIO cooling system, then... Uh, the chances that I'll ever need that again are about about zero. I'll still keep it though until I get get tired of hauling it around with me from house to house. Uh, standoff screws, installing the fans and radiator. Okay, so this is a water system, so uh, I don't want to disconnect anything, or else I may have a leaky mess and. Um, uh, and a, a ruined product because I don't have the means by which to refill it. But um, so I'm, I'm stuck with the uh, uh, the pump module being attached to the radiator. Uh, it's going to go on this side, which is the top of the computer, and. Um, Oh my gosh, we got screws all over the place. Okay, so 
We've got our fans. They want me to uh, use these as air intakes. We've got long screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So somebody asked earlier if building PCs is hard. It's not hard per se, but you do need to be careful and you need to pay very close attention to the instructions. And it's easy to think, well, I've done this a hundred times before. But uh, then what happens is you, you make an assumption, like I did with the, uh, with the, um, you know, the, uh, the power supply uh, enclosure here, or with the CPU mounting um, uh, bracket, or with the, the brackets on the cooling unit. You make an assumption, and that ends up causing you problems and potentially uh, messing up your hardware, which um, will make you feel really dumb. So best to just take your time, read the instructions, make sure you understand what the instructions are telling you within um, the limits of like, you know, like the instruction manuals you get with hardware are usually like not, like they're usually bare bones, you know, so there you, you, you will usually have questions even after reading the instructions, but uh, do the, do the best you can, and when in doubt, uh, consult the people in your live chat because they know what they're doing. Radiator mount from the top, fans with the open side looking below. <laughs> yeah, the open side, which is also the... So, the, uh, the way the fans are, um, the open side, so you've got this cage on the one side, and then the open side on the other with the logo on it, which is sort of this display side. And uh, the fan will blow out the, the logo side. So um, that means it's sucking in from the cage side. Easy to get confused, and they don't usually mark the fans with in and out, uh, but yeah. So, um, Blueberry uh, has some things to say. Um, PCIe Express NVMe 4.0 uh, SSDs. The, um, uh, I did a little bit of research on that. I was meant that the, the 3.0 versus 4.0 thing was mentioned to me by a friend and, uh, who he doesn't have as much experience building systems, but he likes to keep up on the latest uh, gizmos. And um, uh, sucks from everything. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. So the well, first of all, the the Samsung. Pro, uh, not whatever they are, 970 Pro uh, SSDs are very good SSDs. Um, as far as the 3.0 versus 4.0, when I searched, I only found like one brand of, of PCIe 4.0 uh, SSD, M.2 SSDs. Um, Uh, for sale and it was like PNY or some not premium brand and uh, I really preferred to get the Samsung because I uh, they have a proven track record of performance so you know if this were a god box and this is not quite a god box this is but if the, this is a you know somewhere in between 
It's like sub-god. It's like demigod. <laughs> uh, but if this were a true god box, then it would be like a $10,000 system, and I would pull out all the bells and whistles, and I would have gotten the custom cooling system and the and the 64-core CPU and all of that rigmarole. And, um, uh, you know, but, but I didn't quite go to that point, so... Uh, but the, nonetheless, this is going to be a, an excellent computer that, that, that should serve my needs very well. And as far as getting dual, dual GPUs, yeah, that'd be great if I wanted to spend another $1,400 on a second 2080 Ti, but, um, or however much it was, $1,300. Um, I mean, and at some point I could add a second, a second GPU, but... Um, there's also the consideration of what is going to utilize multiple GPUs. And if I'm rendering videos in Adobe Premiere, um, most of what I will be doing is not going to be using uh, the GPU to its full capacity. It's going to be primarily uh, leaning on the, on the CPU and the core, the core clock speed, which is why another reason why I wanted to get the 24 core um, uh, Threadripper because the 32 core has a slightly less clock, uh, core clock speed and then the 64 core even though it's got lots of cores and lots of threads has an even slower core clock speed and by by lowering that core clock speed you are um, uh, going to take a performance hit on processes that use the uh, the uh, single thread you know the single thread uh, uh, clock speed as its as its primary performance measure. Suck from the logo side. So suck from the logo, blow out the case. So I actually want the cage. So, like I said, it's very easy to get. It, it doesn't matter how many how many systems I build. I, I always get confused about the fan direction, um, and uh, so according to at least two people, the uh, <laughs> oh, Appable. That that was because of uh, Snow Kittens' name. It, it translates into a a potentially questionable word uh, uh, from the Dutch, which is why uh, YouTube uh, holds it for review. It's, un it's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, anytime his name appears in a comment, it's going to get held for review. Snu Puzjus Puyus Golly gee, I don't know how to pronounce Dutch. So bottom line, I want the cage uh, side facing down because that's what's going to be blowing out and I want it to blow into the case from the top. <clears throat> so, radiator. Need long screw, if I can find it. That goes all the way through the fan to the other side. And that screws into the radiator. So I can go ahead and just mount these. Um, I need to know how it's going to be oriented though. So this is going to be... <laughs> it's going to be like that. And then this is going to be... Like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is uh, mount the fans to the radiator, and then I will mount the radi mount the radiator to the uh, to the case.
Am I in view here? Yes, I am. It's a tight uh, screw thread there. I'll wait until I get the second screw to tighten it down to make sure my alignment's correct. So that's going to point backwards and that is okay because that will be concealed and concealed is what we like. It's when working with these tight components that you kind of wish you could use a power tool, but you really don't want to use a power tool on a computer, so. Okay, so Gradia, yeah. um, you're going to make me look this up online. Um, so first, it sounded like you were saying that uh, the logo side was where the air came out. Oh, wait, no. The logo side was where the air came in. And the, grid, the grill side is where the air came out. However, now you're saying that it's the opposite. So I'm going to have to look this up. Um, because y'all have me twisted around and upside down. Okay, intake is the uh, intake is the lo logo side, which is which is what I thought, and um, the out output is going to be uh, that way. So we've got our radiator. This is a radiator. This is the fan. It's going to be pulling air through the radiator and outputting into the body of the case, which is what was recommended by the manual. So could you clarify, um, could you clarify why you think the, it should be opposite? Because you seem to be contradicting yourself a couple times over there. Um, because if it's in, if it's pulling in from the, where did you come from? If it's pulling in from this side and it's spitting out from this side, then I want it spitting out air into the case. So pulling air through the, the radiator 
cool air from the outside through the radiator and spitting that into the case, which is what the manual told me to do. Because remember, um, somebody, uh, who was it? Uh, exhausting hot air. Oh, Chris V mentioned exhausting hot air. Because remember, the fans here, uh, the hot, the hot, the hotness that's going to be, oh golly. Yeah. Let me take another look at the manual here and ignore everything that everybody else says. Power, fans, pump. Okay, I don't know, no, no. TR4. Mounting the fans as air intake. That's interesting. So I guess the I guess the theory is they want you to make it an air intake because the coolest air is going to be outside your case. And you want to pull the coolest air you you want to pull the coolest air past the radiator fins uh, so that it can do the maximum cooling on the on the water that's cycling. It's not exhausting hot air. What it's doing is it's it's pulling the heat out of the water cooling uh, pipes and so it takes the coolest air runs it past those radiator fins and uh, uh, and then spits the 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 air you know and then and then exhausts that air out into the case so the air it's it's exhausting into the case is warmer but Not blowing on my legs. No, I'm not going to have this case on the floor. This is a, this is too much of a showpiece to, to relegate to the dirty floor. Um, I'm going to have it. What I would, what I'd like to do is put it on display behind me for live streams. But I'm not sure if, if I can uh, extend a video cable that far. Um, so. All right, so I've got the three fans in the front. They are currently uh, intake. They're, they're taking air in from the front and spitting that air into the case. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I will split the difference and uh, because I've got to have... Um, I've got to have an output fan. I mean, I've got to have uh, air blowing out of the case, not just um, whatever. So I'll go ahead and flip this around. So the manual suggests uh, pulling air in um, past the radiator and spitting it out into the case. However, uh, I've already got three intake fans on the front of the case. Now, if I turn those around, not only do I have more output than input, which is not optimal, but also because that's going to be pulling in dust through the open. Uh, in other words, you want the air intake to the case to come through the fans that are filtered, not through the openings in the case, of which there are many. Um, you want the case to be overpressurized so that it can blow the air out of the holes. So you want more inputs than outputs. Um, and uh, uh, so yeah, I'll turn this fan around so that it will be blowing out the air uh, 
past the radiators and um, should be fine I'll have to keep my eye on the temps but uh, especially when I do overclocking which will have to come later once I get everything all situated but this is good this is it's good to work through uh, the problem logically and make a make an educated or a, make an informed decision as to what to do and I'm, I'm deciding to flip these around even though it's not what the manual says to do because if I turn the if I turn the the front case fans around so they're blowing out then not only am I blowing air out the front of the case which is just weird but also um, uh, I would have more outputs than inputs and that's not ideal so I'll go ahead and leave the front case fans alone and I'll turn this guy around so that it will blow out through the radiator and uh, If my thread ripper uh, spontaneously combusts, I will let you know, and I will go find Gradya and, and go beat him up. <laughs> That's one fan. She was holy cow. So one benefit to doing this as a live stream is that uh, I get comments from the peanut gallery uh, on um, what I'm doing, which have helped me to. Uh, make more informed decisions about how to proceed. Uh, for example, the direction of the... Uh, I might have come to the, to the same conclusion on my own, but um, the comments definitely got me thinking about direction of flow and what I wanted to do, especially considering the existing case fans, and I don't have any fans in the back of the case currently. I might get some at some point. but. Um, I'll have to see how the, uh, again, how the temperature performance goes. Chris is a very happy peanut. Ugh. These things make my arms tired. Well, my arm. Uh, get real peanut gallery um, is a phrase uh, like an, uh, an American I guess it's American um, what uh, figure of speech uh, referring to where did it start like circuses I guess uh, the peanut gallery anyway it's it, it means getting comments from like, you know, like random onlookers tosses peanuts. All right, so we are now blowing out of the case. All right, now next step you know cooling I must say it's a pain in the butt I need some coffee cooling didn't used to be such a big deal but since we have little nuclear power generators in our computers these days for processors uh, <clears throat> cooling has become absolutely critical Okay, so this is going to mount to the top, it's going to hang down, and uh, okay, so this has the pipes going down by the back side of the case, which should be fine. 
um, fans in the radiator. We've got small screws, eight of them. Washers, eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Screw, washer, holes. All right. All right, so I think there's a filter on the top of the case I need to remove. Oh, wow, the thing just pulls right off. Look at that. Doo -doo. It's unfortunate that the, um, the plastic uh, uh, cooling unit cover was only compatible with the Intel bracket because I, I would like to pr keep protecting it while I'm installing this thing. So we've got on the fans, we've got two cables on each fan. We've got power and then the RGB interface. It's tight. Holy cow. Hmm. I don't like tight. Not when I'm pushing against motherboard components. Let's see if I can see if I can get this thing situated a little more gracefully. That's where it goes. Hey, huh. sorry about the top of my head there. Um, what is that? What is that for? All right, there's a, um, there's a thumb screw here on this, this bracket on the back side of the motherboard. I mean, on the back side, on the top edge of the case. And I'm gonna unscrew it and see what it does. Maybe it'll make it easier for me to install it. Install this. All right, never.
call them thumb screws, but my thumbs are not quite able to break that initial uh, torque, that initial tension. Okay, so it's kind of very short here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is mount the uh, mount the thing um, offline, as it were. All right, so that's my orientation. So this is the back and not like this. Thanks, get real. Enjoy your soak in the tub. So these, these line up great. Um, screws what I'm a little concerned about is uh, it's going to be pressing against this uh, heat spreader thingy um, when I put it in the case but hopefully by mounting it outside on this bracket uh, hopefully I can um, Minimize how much that that heat spreader gets pressed against. Turn the side with the connections on the front. Uh, so, Gradio, I presume what you're saying is the um, the. Uh, The hoses coming out of the radiator, I should put on the front. Well, in the um, in the diagram, in the instructions, they have the radiator. I mean, the uh, hoses from the radiator on the back side of the case. So. Yeah, they definitely show the radiator hoses coming out. I mean the. Uh, the hose is coming out the back side. So we'll go with this and see where we end up. I tell you, this, um, this radiator, I mean, this uh, cooling system nonsense is uh, labor intensive. And this is an all in one cooler. If I were to build my own cooling system, holy cow. Pain that would be. Uh, Chris, if it starts leaking, then I start leaking. <laughs> Pretty much.
Um, so, yeah, regarding the bend in the hoses, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I am hoping that I don't need to undo all of this screwing that I'm doing right now. Uh, but if I do, then that's what uh, that's what coffee is for. Take a sip and move on. That is four screws. Oh, uh, before I do the other four, let me just um, just do a reality check and uh, slide this into place. Wow, that barely fits. You can't uh, you can't see it from your angle, but that just barely fits into place above that heat spreader uh, thing. Now, as far as the uh, position of the hoses, let me see here. Let me turn this thing so that I'm so. The water block is going to go here. I don't think that's too sharp. They're not kinked or anything like that. That should be fun. All right, so at this point, I'm going to leave that bracket where it is and see if I can get the thumb screws back in it. Um, Cletus. Yeah, because we're working with really tight tolerances here. Oh, uh, yes, you got threaded. Okay. pressure on them and now they're kind of kind of warping the corners of the fan mounts I mean the fan chassis Dale with the uh, full towers. So this is a mid tower case. Um, there's a fair amount of room to work with, but it's it's a little bit tight. Uh, like for example, my fans pushing up against the uh, the the cooling bracket here. But um, uh, my 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 old computer is in an uh, a Corsair carbide cube case. And the thing is about twice this wide, uh, and it's it's literally it's a cube. In fact, my buddy has he 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 and I built our computers uh, at the same time about five years ago, and his is a little more robust than mine, but they're basically roughly equivalent. And they used a lot of the same components, including the case. His was a white one, mine was a black one, but. Um, hmm, lubrication. But, uh, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> oh yeah, he actually called his computer cube because it's, it's cubic. So in this case, not as much room to work with, but um, still a really, it should be a really sharp looking case. Now the way I, um, the way I oriented these, the, uh, 
the cables are coming out the top, which is the, sort of the side, the open side, but I'll, I'll deal with it. All right. So four more screws and then the radiator will be completely mounted. So let it be written. This is where I wish I had power tools. three And there's four. Hallelujah. All right. uh, now for the final thumb screw over here. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, installing the pump unit, align the bracket and pump over the over the standoff screws as shown. Tighten the thumb screws until all four corners are firmly secured. So, Obviously, the, um, the pump unit has thermal adhesive already applied to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that rather than scrape it off and use my own Arctic Silver. If I run into, th if I run into thermal issues, I can always uh, revisit that decision. Um, you know, and um, we'll, we'll see. But... Meantime, so standing up and leaning over just about slaughters me. So I'm going to, uh, 
Uh, turn this thing. Turn this thing around. Okay. So this whole thing just attaches magnetically. That's very nice. So after this stream is done, I may I may do some uh, additional cable management or tidying up or whatever. But I, I, I will do a post a, a power on self test at the end of this uh, stream to as a proof of concept or whatever as a, a smoke test as uh, Dale puts it to see if things are connected and um, uh, to at least to the point where the system powers on and doesn't like disintegrate so this is actually a very easy uh, this water block installs super easy I think there's a protective plastic on this Anyway, I'll remove that later. There's little pr protective plastic uh, films that, that are on all smooth surfaces. They get on my nerves. No, it's not hurting anything, so I'll let it, let it sit there for now. I have to say that the, the radiator was a pain, but the water block itself, super easy. And I'm so glad that I figured out the correct bracket to use. All right, what do I see here? Looking at the chat. Talking about SpaceX. test rigs on a piece of acrylic or plywood. Yeah, you, you don't need a case. I mean, so long as the components are, are plugged in, you can have them arranged however you want. Uh, a lot of you know, custom computer systems don't even involve a case. They just have components like strapped to a board or whatever. That's fine. Okay. So Chris V, RGB, yeah. So the um, uh, the cooling unit fans are RGB. The cooling unit logo, I believe, is RGB, unless it's just pure, plain white. I don't remember. The memory, the crystalline memory modules are RGB. The, uh, the case is RGB. The video card is RGB, which is right here, which I may as well plug in now. Um, removing the uh, little protective doodad from the Huzuma Watset. So there is a lot of RGB in this system. Why? Because it's pretty. There we go. And now I can take those uh, two thumb screws from the uh, the the back port covers and put them back on. Mm -mm -mm. That's why I love magnetic tips, so the uh, screws don't go flying.
Okay. Now, uh, let's see. This is USB to the, okay. So USB to the Corsair uh, water block. That's the interface for controlling uh, the cooling system. Except it's got a bunch of wires coming out of it. What are these wires? Are they labeled? We've got power, we've got power, we've got SATA power, we've got Yeah, uh, I guess I'm not done reading up on the uh, freaking cooling system. Um, connecting power to the fans and pump. Okay, so the fans have their own power, they have their own RGB connections, and the water block has a whole bunch of connections hardwired plus this. Um, RGB, I mean, this uh, USB micro cable that plugs into the side here for reasons that will hopefully soon become clear. All right. Connect pump power to an available SATA power plug. Connect pump TAC cable to the CPU fan, <clears throat> fan header. So, so we've got a tachometer, a tachometer. <laughs> pizza Hut wants to deliver me pizza. That's nice of them. I did that the other day and they, they, they gave me the wrong pizzas. I uh, had to go back and get a second set of pizzas and um, they let me keep the uh, the first set, so I gave them to some neighbors of ours with a bunch of kids. Well, two very hungry kids anyway. Pump tack cable each fan to the shrouded four pin connectors on the pump. Oh, I see. So the, uh, the fan power gets plugged into uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of small. The fan power plugs into these headers on the, uh, 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 coming from the pump. You don't plug them into the motherboard, you plug them into the, okay, so this is one, two, we'll call this two, Oop. and then one, Oop. The pump itself plugs into an RGB, and the uh, RGB, getting my terms flip-flopped, the pump itself plugs into a SATA power uh, source, and there's also a three-pin, it's actually a one-pin um, CPU fan. Um, I presume that's where that would plug in, is the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Yeah, CPU fan on the motherboard. See the power plug. It's strange that these, okay, so it's strange that the serial ATA power and the CPU fan tachometer lead would be so close together. Like these are, you could only put these a couple inches apart. Uh, but the CPU fan attaches to the motherboard, plugs into the motherboard, and the, um, the serial ATA power goes to uh, a power cord coming from the power supply. So that's kind of weird, but whatever. Pump RGB connector. That must be this thing. So 
This is number one. That's why these connectors look so weird. They're RGB. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got our little rat's nest that we'll uh, tidy up later. And uh, got to find a CPU fan. And that's a chassis fan. Oh my gosh. There may be, there may be headers on the other side of that metal bracket that I cannot see. Let me consult the motherboard oracle manual thing. Oh. CPU fan. Golly. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, well, no, wow. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to unscrew these thumb screws in order to take the uh, radiator back off the top of the case. Because um, sometimes in PC building, the order in which you do things is critical. Um, sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. And in this case, I, I have no access to the uh, CPU fan header on the motherboard because uh, the radiator and fans are in the way. So I'm gonna loosen these up. Oh my gosh, they're tight. And I'm just going to flip this over and set it over here. Uh, set it somewhere stable. Is that stable? Not particularly. There. Okay. Oof. So the CPU fan header is right over here and uh, right there. There, I'll separate these cables a little bit to give myself some wiggle room. Also, the EATX 12 volt connectors back there that I need to uh, install. So, let me take a look at the uh, power cables. Um, where's a my knock when you need one? I see. <laughs> Maria, thank you. Very pretty computer. It's going to be, this thing is going to look amazing when it's all lit up. Um, uh, you know, okay. So obviously, gesticulate. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, obviously, the world is in a strange time right now. Um, and... Whenever I build a computer, I have to make a critical decision what I'm going to name it. <laughs> and in, in uh, un, unsurprisingly, 
the first thing that came to mind was, and this may be too soon or too, or inappropriate, but the first thing that came to mind was COVID. Um, uh, I might not do that because it might offend some people, but then again, what do I care who I offend? I don't know. But um, anyway, uh, it very well might have a green theme to the RGB lighting um, because it was born maybe an alternating green and red theme because it's uh, in observance of my 66,600th uh, subscriber and it's also being built amidst the, uh, the worst global quarantine in more than a century. Um, Just reading up on the chat. <clears throat> Please not COVID. COVID 666. <laughs> evil. It is evil. It's not just a computer. It is an evil computer. Uh, I've always joked about 666. One of my old phone numbers used to be 666 something. Um, because why not? It's, it's fun. And Satan don't bother me. <laughs> right. uh, okay, what do we got? Big fat 24 pin. Uh... Okay, so we've got a couple things. All right, so what I'm going to do. What are the what are the um, the things I need to access behind the panel here? So CPU opt. I don't know what that is. Um, we've got uh, two EATX 12 volt connectors here. I'm going to plug both of those in, and those are that's all I need to access behind this this heat panel. I mean this heat spreader. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug those in and then I'm going to put the cooling unit, uh, who's a what's it, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, the uh, radiator and fans back in place so that I can flip the computer around because I need to get at the power supply, which is uh, access is on the other side. So P PSU, PCIE. So we've got the six plus two connectors. Oh, that's that's for the that's for the video. Those are the PCIE connectors for the video. Um, and here we have another PCIE. Those are going to go to. So you see here. Um, On the video card, we've got, and that may be too small for you to see, but we've got uh, a four, an, an eight pin connector here and an eight pin connector here. That's two eight pin PCIe uh, 12 volt connectors that uh, I'm gonna use these cables for. And then here's another PCIe that I don't need. And CPU, okay. CPU connector, PSU, CPU connector. So these are the, uh, these are also eight pin, but they're the CPU connectors. These are what I'll use on the back side, on the top side of the, uh, the motherboard here. Um, okay. So, what I need to do right now is uh, connect these CPU power cables to the motherboard. And just let them dangle because I don't yet have access to the, uh, 
uh, modular, the back of the modular power supply unit. Need to flip the case around for that. So, baby steps. All right, that goes to the PSU. This goes to the MOBO. I wish I could zoom in so you could see what I'm doing, but all I'm doing is plugging in. Uh, these are kind of weird. Um, so, let's see if I can. These are the, the CPU power connectors. They come, they, they plug in like a block of, of eight pins. You see that? But they uh, are split, so there's actually four and four, but you put them in right side by side together, so. They plug in as an, as an eight pin plug. Okay. So we got that. And we've got that. Make sure those are tucked out of the way. That's all. That's all I should need to access from the uh, back side of that um, heat spreader. So now what I got to do is put this thingy back in place. There we go. Where are my two thumb screws? There they are. So, um, if you're not familiar with the process of building PCs, uh, it takes a while. Uh, you got to be patient. Sometimes have to backtrack and redo things because you didn't either you didn't read the read the instructions or you didn't understand them or whatever, or you, you didn't have the foresight to route cables in a particular way. But uh, it's very rewarding in the end because you get a great system that you built yourself and uh, it is fun. A little frustrating sometimes, but uh, that goes with the territory. Uh, <laughs> Cotton Cat, name it me, is a tribute to Windows ME. That's funny. I, back in the back in the Windows ME days, so I had a laptop. My first laptop, um, back in college, had Windows ME on it, and uh, I, my desktop background um, was a picture of. Uh, it was like a a Windows logo, but like with a with a uh, Confederate flag, and it said Bubba Gates Windows for Rednecks. <laughs> I got a kick out of it. <clears throat> So these other cables from the um, power supply, we've got serial ATA, we've got more serial ATA, we've got more serial ATA, we've got, I don't even remember what they're called, but the old style, um, the old style uh, internal peripheral power connectors and more of the same. So, uh, all right. So now I've got my cooling cooleroonie reconnected. Let me uh, tilt this back up. And what am I looking for? Oh yeah, I'm plugging things into the back. So. For the purposes of the live stream, now normally if I were just building this, I'd keep it upright and, and then just work from one side and then the other. But for the purposes of the live stream, I will uh, tilt this um, 
so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll, I'll tilt it again when I need to route the, uh, the cables to the other side. So I don't need any of the three and a half inch drive brackets right now, uh, which are these guys that I had the issue with the little pin on earlier. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't even need any of the 2.5 inch drive brackets yet. So my old, my old computer, which is currently on the other side of the table streaming this for you. Uh, my old computer um, has, let me see, what am I saying? Um, I have no idea. I lost my train of thought. Let me just unscrew these cables. Okay, so these are the video card power. And, uh, oh, okay. All right. I just realized. Um, got too many things. Um, each one has two connectors at the end. So I only need one of these cables to power my single video card. Um, because the, the one video card has two sets of power plugs but the one cable will give me both of those. So I actually don't need the other uh, cable, which is fine. The fewer cables, the better. It keeps it tidier. All right, let me see. So there's a empty space right here. So you can see here, this rectangle, ooh, rectangle is empty space where all the cables are gonna go that come out of the, uh, the power supply. And then there's a, um, a rubber pass through like a, a, a port with a rubber thing um, there which is where the cables are going to poke up through so I will go ahead and uh, poke these through giggity let me take a look at the uh, okay so Peripheral, Molex, CPU, PCIe, CPU, PCIe. Okay. Molex. Those are the old, the old, the old style connectors that uh, I was talking about. Um, L, J, L. Wait, what? Oh, I see. These are defining. What the heck? Oh, I see. I was just trying to make heads or tails of the markings on the back of this uh, power supply. So I only need one PCIe connector. And that can go right here. And that's going to go up here. So what I'm going to do is once once every once all the cables are plugged in on the other on on the business side the the exposed side of the motherboard I'm going to tuck all the unused cable length back down into this hole so that it can be out of sight out of mind um, motherboard that's interesting okay so apparently these two go on the power supply side because um, if you can see it this on this side there's a great big fat clip right here and on this side, they're the same number of pins, but they're split into uh, 10 and 16 or whatever. And 10 and, and, and uh, 3, 4, 5, 10 and freaking whatever. But they have small clips. And uh, looking at the back of the um, power supply, 
uh, I need to use the end with the small clips, even though they're not labeled as such. No way I can sneak a light in there. No, okay, fine. I'll just do it by feel. I'll hold the light with my teeth. the open one free and available uh, I have no idea where this is going on the other side so I'm going to go ahead and tilt this up and take a look. <clears throat> oh yeah, of course. All right. Muy interesante. Obviously, that's not a load-bearing structure. That was just the uh, plastic cover on the uh, the um, the uh, things here. Hmm. There. Okay. Good as new, pretty much. Thanks, Snow Kittens. Thanks for that F. I appreciate that. All right, so these are PSU power connectors that need to go. Oh my gosh, that might be tight. Um, well okay I can wrap I can route it down here but uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's gonna stretch <clears throat> make sure I'm not squishing anything and sometimes you know and it's it's typical that some of the some of the connectors and cables they give you aren't long enough, even if you don't have a huge case. Uh, yeah, which is why every build is in, every build involves some compromises. Um, you know, like sometimes it's not quite as perfectly clean uh, uh, an appearance as you want, but um, you do what you can and. Uh, work within the constraints of, of uh, reality, which is what we all have to do. Let's connect the motherboard. Gosh. These, these are easy. This is going to be the um, the PCI video. Let's 
if I get them aligned properly. Hmm. There we go. And number two. There it goes. Click. Okay, there's the um, video card power. Tuck this, tuck this back in to the cabinet. All right, so let's. I've got to tilt this back up. Hopefully, not <clears throat> cracking my case again. That yeah, so that cover it'll stay in place. There may be a little a little clip that's that's snipped, but uh, all right. So turning this back over again carefully. Ow, my fingers. All right. So we got CPU slash. PCI Express. So this might actually reach. Oh boy, it barely reaches. Holy cow. All right, and then CPU PCI Express. There we go. Perfect. Um, now let's take this. Uh, so the motherboard cable is pretty tight, but the video card. In there. Now I also needed a, a uh, not a Molex, now that I remember that word, I needed a serial ATA connector for the, um, well for something, for the uh, water block. Seems pretty short. We'll see. We'll see if it's long enough. Uh, okay, so let's pick the topmost. Um, the topmost serial ATA out on the power supply. Making sure not to grab this by that plastic part. With all this stuff in there, the case is pretty heavy. Alright, so where is our... Uh, there it is. stretch so this is going to power the water block and the fans uh, and I can tuck this back down in there because we don't need that extra space now if there's a lot of extra slack then you could go in one of these rubber ports here and then back out another rubber port down here and run the cables behind this motherboard plate and that way you would conceal them even further so um, I might have enough room to do that here let's see may as well uh, 
may as well get it done right. I'm just going to tilt this up and thereby losing all my light. But uh... oh, whoa. Okay, there's a. Um... Is this bracket removable or, or no? no? Aha, uh -huh. it has thumb screws. Very nice. I love those thumb screws that are too tight for me to loosen with my thumbs. So they've got this, this uh, what, cable run on the back side of the, uh, the motherboard that um, allows you to manage your cables neatly. <clears throat> cool, and it even comes with um, with little uh, Velcro ties, sort of the weird plastic Velcro. All right. Where, oh, where did my serial ATA go? There it is. And they hook up perfectly behind. Now what I don't know is um, because the plug is back there too. I don't know if oh come on. Presume this bracket will fit over all of that, hopefully. <clears throat> yep, it sure will. All right, well, let's see what else what else I need to plug in up here. So, uh, what's all this mess? We've got HD audio that goes to the case. We've got a bunch of uh, wires here that are coming from the case. Um, power LEDs. Okay. So. Somewhere over here, um, we've got our cooling unit squared away. We've got we may need our motherboard instructions again, not sure. Got our CPU protector is now moot. This is the little USB cord for the cooler, which I'm not sure about that. Filter, empty box, zip tie, zip tie, I'm not zip tie, twist ties. Okay, we've got our Torque wrench, solid state drive manuals, they're hard drives, I mean, I really, 
empties. Brackets. Hmm. So these screws here are from the cooling system and I don't need any more screws for that. What I really need, and so this CPU bracket I'm not going to need, I can close this up. Check in the chat to see if there's any questions or comments. Fun is a nightmare. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, what I'm looking for... Okay, motherboard, right. I still have connectors in the motherboard box. So, um, here we have our motherboard box. Mystery bracket, mystery cable, this is another mystery cable, mystery bracket, it's like USB-C connectors or something, this might be for Wi-Fi, I'm not sure, bunch of serial ATA, don't need those because I've got my M.2 drives, and this is what I needed, this little adapter here uh, for the motherboard to case pinouts. So Tig uh, Rahoff, Tig Rahoff, the um, the pump that is the water block gets its power from a serial ATA uh, power connection from the power supply. Um, it then has power outputs that go to each of the cooling fans on the radiator. It also has a CPU tachometer that connects to the motherboard CPU fan header so that uh, the motherboard has connectivity with with the CPU fan, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it's registering the RPMs of the aggregate RPMs of these two or, or, or what, but in any case uh, and then there's the, the RGB connectors for each of the fans because the, they have the illumination. Um, but the water block gets its power, the pump gets its power from a serial ATA connection, which is uh, uh, 12 volts, I guess. Uh, it's going to be more than the 5 volts that the little, I don't know. All right, so... Yeah, here we have our little um, CPU adapter that that plugs into the motherboard with all of the uh, and what this what's the, what this lets you do is not CPU this is the motherboard um, uh, case connector adapter. What it lets you do is plug everything into this little adapter uh, and then. Boom, you just plug, need to plug this whole adapter into the motherboard rather than trying to plug all of the little case, you know, connectors directly into the motherboard, which is a pain. Um, so what do we got here? Uh, some of these are going to be fans. That's a fan. Ugh. Cable management is 
next to godliness, as they say. What is this, a loop? Holy cow, man. One of these cables comes from... Where are you going? What the blazes? Okay. That's why I'm confused. It's like a it's like a loop. Um anyway. So this is requesting This is requesting serial ATA power. Hmm. Oh, right, because these are going to the, uh, well, presumably, maybe these are going to the hard drive uh, mounts on the back. Okay, here we've got a great big uh, USB 3.0 connector. And here we have another fan. Should be three fans in the front, so somewhere around here there's a third fan connector. So fan, fan, power LEDs, USB 3.0, power switch. HD audio. There's the other fan. One, two, three. Okay. Say to power. All right, so it looks like the only motherboard connectors we have to worry about are uh, the power switch and the power LED. There's no reset switch, which is, you know, kind of superfluous nowadays anyway. Uh, and then there's a, a HD audio connector, which is a separate connector on the, a separate set of headers on the motherboard. So we'll move this aside. Do, do, do. So really minimal. We don't have, we don't have a uh, uh, hard drive uh, indicator. We don't have um, a reset switch. We don't have a speaker, like a case speaker. Power LED plus minus. So what we do is we connect these on the little adapter and then we just plug the whole bleeding adapter into the motherboard. And where is our power switch? Strange, power LED, power LED. And then we've got a s PLED, PLED. Hmm, that's weird. There's two sets of power LED uh, connectors. Where did my power switch go? There it is. Ground, power, power switch. Hmm. 
and then this gets plugged in uh, somewhere. USB, USB, RGB header. Oh golly. It is right on the other side of these uh, where these cables are coming out of the um, let me confirm in the motherboard manual that that's where this connects to yucky 13 is the system power connector yeah 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 okay chassis fan 2 chassis fan 3 Where's chassis fan one? Oh, it's way on the other side. Pump. Hmm. Front panel audio, HD audio, okay. All right, so the audio, which is this little guy, goes way over here. Got it half on, half off there. Let me try again. There. Need proper illumination. So when you're working in computers, getting illumination to where you're plugging things in can be a real challenge sometimes. Um, but sure enough, the um, oh man, this is this is going to be fun. You know what? I might just I might just forego the um, the use of this little this little motherboard header adapt this uh, case header case whatever connector uh, adapter because it sticks up too far, and that mess coming out from the power supply right there is really going to get in the way and these are tiny little wires i don't want to bend anything um, so then if so if i were going to build this again i would probably want to connect the uh i would probably want to connect the case uh the case connectors the various things that need to connect to the motherboard before I started running these big fat power cables because once I do that it becomes difficult to get at certain parts of the motherboard like this corner here let me see what I can do Diabolical. Oof. All right. And what are you? What is this? So, so uh, I actually need two SATA powers. 
me look at my we're looking at my power supply cables and I wonder if there's a SATA connector with three plugs on it. I don't know. One, two, three, four. Those are Molex, don't care about those. <laughs> hey, Zoki. Yes, this can run Doom. Okay, so one, two, three, four. That'll do it. That'll do, Donkey. I'd rather have one cable with an extra connector on it than, than run multiple cables. So, um, Serial ATA is way in the back. You get to get your fingertips in there. And wiggle. Wiggle it. So, you know what? You know what I might do? In fact, you know what I will do? Since I've got this tilted up like this and I'm able to access the uh, um, the plugs on the power supply, I'm going to unplug the stuff from the power supply. And I'm going to push those cables back through, including this big fat motherboard connector. Um, because what that will let me do is plug the case uh, plugs back into the. I mean, it'll, it'll allow me access to the to the case headers. Um, you know, the power switch and the power LED, which the kit which these big fat cables are currently blocking. So. So now the coast is clear. 
Let's tilt this side again. Where are my where where are my Durgans? Where are my um, who's a what's it's my uh, case connectors? So I'm not going to use the adapter because I've only got two things that I'm plugging in, and I don't want them to stick up too far and potentially get damaged by. Uh, by the big cables that are be going to be coming through this port. So, let me see. Let me see where, where stuff would plug in. Ground power, power LED. Power LED, power switch. Positive on the end. These are kind of reversed. It's a little awkward. Well, I can just flip these over because there's no polarity to a single wire. <laughs> just, uh, in other words, it doesn't matter whether I put one wire on one, or I mean one jumper on one, uh, wire uh, facing one direction or another so long as it's on the correct oh boy we're doing rocket surgery here i'm telling you hopefully i get them in the right places there butamus now for the power switch. And now for so this chassis fan three is chassis fan two. And chassis fan one is like way the heck over here. Hmm. One, two. That's a pump. Okay, one, two, three. These are the chassis fan power connectors. Now let's get all these on the same side here. There we go. <laughs> Booyah. All right, now, how in the world am I gonna get way over here? That's a pump, that's a chassis fan. So what I've got to do is thread it in between the video card and the memory. Giggity. These other two should be easy. This one goes right where? Where do you go? I lost it. Two, three. Oh, right. This one goes right here. Okay. And then number two. Chassis fan goes. I can find it. Number two chassis fan goes uh, right here. It would be nice if they had multiple chassis fan connectors like right next to each other, but whatever. 
And then number three chassis fan is what we need to thread through the needle. So this one is going to go away over here and we need to run it like underneath these so I'll tell you what I'll do is before threading it I'll plug it in that way I can minimize the, uh, the slack on the cable Chassis fan and pump. Oh, help me, Tom Cruise. It'd be really useful to have like a VR headset and like a a, um, a, a scope mic, not mic, a uh, like a camera on a stick, a stick. Sorry. So now what I need to do is get this threaded behind these memory clips. Clears mud. All right. So we'll tuck those in there. We'll tuck this in here. Try to make things as neat as possible. Um, this big fat USB connector goes right here. pins because that's the worst. Okay, USB is plugged in and wow all those connectors are right up against that big that port where all those huge motherboard cable or power cables are going to be coming out of. That's not perfect but since when since when was life ever? Um, So this is going to be our serial ATA power. Even though we don't have any serial ATA drives, we've got a water block and a couple of a couple of case um, parts that require serial ATA power. I think I think what those are is they go to um, the, the hard drive, uh, who's in the what's it's the, the hard drive uh, brackets on the on the back side of the motherboard. Um, okay, so we got that, and we've got our big old motherboard power.
Kush. And we've got our very tight um, CPU power. It's going to be tight like a toiger. We've got our other CPU power, and we've got our VGA power, VGA GPU power. Very important port right here. That's where all the power goes through. Sorry if there's a knocking sound coming from my case. I something's rattling. Um, should be all right once everything is upright. Okay. There. So I've got to decide what to do with these serial ATA powers. One of them is right here. And uh, where's the other one? Where'd the other one run off to? Hmm. Is that it? Are you it? That is you. One can't see this, can you? There's two, and then for the third, I'm going to route this sucker to the back side. tilt this so you can see me as if you haven't seen it already so you can see me plug in uh, so I'm looking at these two and a half inch brackets as well as the three and a half inch bracket locations I'm not sure where all that SATA power is going maybe that's to power the various parts of the case the um, the uh, um, lighting and whatnot. I don't know. All right. Let's pull as much of this through as we can. This is going to be our tight one. CPU PCIe, CPU PCIe. Oh yeah, and this is going to be our uh, serial ATA. But first I'll do the motherboard because it's a fatty. And then this little guy, what is that? What is that?
One, two, three. Oh, right. My bad. other cables get the heck out of my way holy cow I'm gonna start getting colorful here okay. modular is better but nothing is easy nothing at all is easy Jeebus Christmas, give me some slack. Thank you. Holy cow. All right. Where is the Rebel Base? There we go. Hey, slack makes all the difference. PSU. PSU. Hail to the king, baby. <laughs> oh, Duke Nukem. All right. Uh, top SATA connector. Oh, good gracious on my Who knew, aside from anyone who's ever built a computer, that putting a computer together would be physically and mentally exhausting. Holy cow. <sighs> okay. So we should have all our power wired. So at some point, maybe after I've ended the stream and committed ritual, ritual suicide, um, I might uh, tidy up these cables a bit by routing them through the, uh, these, uh, port, these ports on the backside. Uh, but at this point, I believe everything is plugged in. We've got our, we've got a USB. We've got our audio. We've got all three case fans. We've got our GPU. Nothing's blocking the fans. Nothing's blocking the CPU fan because there is no CPU fan. Um, let me take the metal twisty ties off of these cables and then use a nice uh, Velcro tie. Yep, yep, absolutely fresh water boy. I'm not going to end the stream before I fire this up. I, I brought a monitor in, an extra monitor, and I'm going to... Um, like, uh, close up the case, and... I have no idea what the default RGB settings are, but... In any case, I'm going to close up the case and... Uh, plug it into the monitor, and see what happens when I turn it on. Hopefully we see a power on self-test rather than dee -dee 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 -dee. or whatever motherboards do these days when they're not happy. 
Chris, I would love a Snickers, but uh, I'm generally not going out these days, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, all I had to eat was um, today was uh, a sandwich. That's that's it. Okay, so let's get this junk, junk out of the way. I'm gonna unplug these so that I can route these cables elsewhere. Um, Where shall I wrap them? The front, I think. Let my cables go. So, uh, by a show of hands in the uh, chat, uh, I know this has been a long process, but uh, um, was this, uh, was this interesting? I mean, are you enjoying this or is it like, what the heck is this guy doing? <laughs> Obnoxious rainbow strobe effect. So, all of my various components came with uh, little Velcro tie things. Oh, cool. Glad to hear it, Tig. Thank you. Because, I mean, I would have done this anyway, and I would have uh, probably used a lot more colorful language if I weren't streaming, but... Uh, um, yeah, I'm glad to have y'all here with me. Plus, you helped me work through some of the issues with uh, the CPU mounting and the, uh, whatever that thing was, the cooling unit. Yep, 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 freshwater boy. Definitely a learning experience. Um, you know, I'm, I'm way too old to, uh, way too old and, and far too practical to pretend like, uh, I know everything or that things should ever be expected to go perfectly. There's always going to be something. And, uh, the key is how you deal with it. Um, and so... As so long as everything works in the end and nothing is too terribly broken. And if it looks real purdy <laughs> with them RGBs, then, uh, then we're good. Okay. All right, you little cable guys, I'm gonna route you under the big ribbons. You, you probably can't see the details of what I'm working on. I'm just trying to route the, uh, because there's a whole mess of cables associated with, of little wires associated with the, um, the cooling system. Like you've got three sets of wires coming out of the, uh, the, the water block, and you've got two sets of wires each coming out of the, the fans, and those all have to be connected. Connected. So this is, these are RGB. Alright, 
right. Now we can take this whole mess, now that it's been routed in the correct, to the correct place, take this whole mess and uh, tie it all up in a bow. Microbyte, glad to see you're still here. Always a pleasure, of course. These little wires, man, these are a pain. Very messy. Okay, so wires are tucked up there anyway. Down here they're a little messy. I'll deal with that another time. All right, so everything's plugged in. Let me just double check my power supply, make sure nothing's screwy back here. No, we just got. So let me put this bracket back on. Sorry for that noise. So I'm just putting the bracket back on that covers the, these uh, cables in the back, um, just to keep them tidy and out of sight. Except you, sir, need to get back in line. I don't want to crimp any cables. That would be bad. Okay. Ah. Now there's your little thumb screws go right here to secure this bracket. Corsair RGB Hub. So, I may not have, uh, I'm, I may not have the RGB cables uh, routed quite correctly because it is, this is a Corsair case and I've got a Corsair uh, RGB water cooler. Um, where's my... And there's an RGB hub right here, which takes those little plugs. It's possible that with, with the case uh, controlling RGB, I should have plugged the uh, RGB from the, from the radiator fans into this rather than into the water block, but whatever. Either way, it'll light up, it'll be colorful, and... Uh, um, Noobs will be pwned. <laughs> okay. So, now what? Now, I'm going to set up a monitor and plug this sucker in, eh? And since the, um, since the camera is, like, hanging from my chandelier, um, 
I'm actually going to put the monitor facing up so that you can see the results uh, as I see them. All right, let's let's do this. Let's turn this guy. Let's turn this frown upside down and. Uh, cable get one from the other room oh hey I've got a power cable actually I need two power cables one for the computer one for the monitor so I'll need a second power cable hey gracias uh, you can count down if you want but I'm not sure I'm not sure when t0 is gonna be because uh, You know what, I need a power strip so that this cord can reach. Uh, one moment. chair to hold the power strip in place. There we go. Uh, make sure power supply is set to off. <laughs> eh, I grabbed the wrong kind of cable. This is a power extension, not a, uh, I mean, a computer power extension, not a uh, uh, regular. So I had like, I had like 25 years of accumulated, uh, you know, computer junk cluttering my space, cluttering my boxes in my house. And um, I went through and picked out a lot of the stuff that I had way too many copies of, like power cables and network cables and uh, things that I didn't need anymore, like old SCSI cables, you know, like what do I need SCSI for? And, um, okay, this is a DVI port. Let's see if I have that. Because the output, the output from motherboard is uh, either HDMI or uh, display port, not DVI and not VGA. And what I have on this old monitor 
This was actually my grandfather's monitor. I inherited it from him. He didn't need it anymore, so uh, I was like, and nobody else wanted it, so I was like, I'll take it. Um, but it's old and it doesn't have a display port. Sure thing, uh, Mr. G. <laughs> I, uh, I have a couple of, actually I have two Dutch moderators, <clears throat> and I do not know how to pronounce very much of anything in Dutch, but uh, uh, like Snow Kittens, I, I cannot, I can't handle that one. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, 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 I do try to pronounce people's names correctly, so if I do mispronounce someone's name, please uh, let me know and I'll try to uh, correct my ways. So since that one chair is holding the uh, power supply or the uh, power strip in place, I'll pull over another chair. All right. So I've got a bag full of video cable adapters. That is, they go from various video formats to various other video formats. Uh, and I don't think I have any more DisplayPort to DVI. What I do have is HDMI to DVI. So what I can do is go from the HDMI out from the computer or from the video card and then adapt it to the HDMI, I mean to the DVI input of the monitor. And then we'll have our video. I, I do have one DisplayPort to uh, uh, DisplayPort to DVI adapter and I actually got that a few months ago for the Mercury Transit because I tried to live stream that from my backyard. It was a major fiasco because you couldn't see anything, but um, I mean, my, my pictures, my still pictures showed it just fine, but my live video from my, uh, my camera. So here we have, where in the world? Uh, here we have HDMI to DVI adapter. Okie dokie. So we've got our HDMI cable. 
that's going to go to HDMI on the video card. And I'll make sure to set this little this little cover thing aside for later. And uh, now I need keyboard and mouse. This, uh, I have a Hewlett Packard mouse that's actually got a twist tie on the cable, which means it's never been used before, which is really weird. I have no idea where it came from. But when you're an IT guy, you accumulate all sorts of mystery items, the origins of which you don't recall. Also, when you're an IT guy, uh, you have too many things competing for your memory banks, uh, which is why you don't recall things. But uh, is USB USB or are there any gotchas back here? What do we got? Uh, no idea. They don't make this easy. There's like a a pattern on the back of this uh, panel that makes it very difficult to read anything. If there's okay, super speed. <clears throat> Whatever. USB is USB. I'm just going to plug it in. And the keyboard. I'm actually going to hijack the keyboard from my other computer. Oh. Oh. It's a reflection. I was like, how is that happening? How do I see myself? Hello. <laughs> Freaked me out. Um, I'm going to use the keyboard from my... Oh, hey, yeah. You get to see my Grumpy Cat Nope shirt here. Here. Nope. Anyway, I'm gonna hijack the keyboard from my other computer because I'm actually short on spare keyboards right now. So this is my trusty old I'll show you when I get plugged in. My trusty old Corsair K95 RGB keyboard that I've had for a few years now. It's uh, it's great. Sometimes gives me double double taps on the uh, uh, some of the keys, but um, it looks good. It performs well. It's got Cherry MX Brown key switches. And, uh, okay, we got our monitor, it's in standby mode, awaiting a signal. We've got keyboard, mouse, uh, shall we drum roll? Okay, so, duba, 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 duba. let's see what happens, eh? Ooh, I see light. Here, let me move this. All right, I see lights on the motherboard. I see lights on the video. I am going to press Z power if I can find Z power. Where is Z power? Where the blazes is the power. <laughs> That's the bottom. Okay, this is the top. The top. The power is way over here. Here, let me turn the lights out. Source. 
Christmas. So, the, uh, can you see my hand? Yeah, sort of. The uh, water block is in fact RGB. I, I didn't know if it was maybe uh, uh, pure white like some Corsair logos are. Oh, hey, look, we've got post. Hey, what does it say? Is that upside down for you? It sure is. Let me see if I can turn that around. something under it to support it, a box. Oh, I guess that'll work. You can still see it. So, Asus Prime TRX Pro, TRX 40 Pro ACPI BIOS Revision 0503 CPU AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3960X 24 core processor. Default speed 3800 MHz. I expect to be overclocking that. Total memory 132 gigabytes. USB devices total, two keyboards, because my keyboard has two plugs, one mouse, three hubs, storage devices, M2, M.2, two hard drives, new CPU installed. Press enter setup, oh please enter setup to configure your system. Uh, I need to bring my keyboard over to where I can touch it. F1 to run setup. Boop. Okay. And the mouse. So, Dale, if you're still tuned in, there's your smoke test. It's a hand. I see poems. All right. Yeah, first things first, install Skyrim, Skyrim, Purple Space Program. Actually, the first game that'll be installed will be uh, Elder Scrolls Online because that's my my game of choice these days. So, okay, this interface. So, with each successive generation of PC hardware. The uh, BIOS gets slicker and slicker. It used to be super bare bones, uh, but nowadays the BIOS is like a tool that you go into and it's got, like you can, you can use the mouse, it's amazing. But um, uh, I'm seeing everything. One, two, three, four G-Skill memories, CPU fans, chassis one, two, three, plus the CPU. Uh, chipset fan, that's built in, I didn't plug that in. Node fan, not applicable. There's two pumps which are not plugged in because it's the, uh, uh, the, the, there are pump headers on the motherboard for like a custom water pump or whatever, but I'm not using those. Uh, I'm using the all-in-one Corsair pump. CPU temperature, 37C, I guess. It's kind of weird. It looks like it's a selectable thing. But yeah, the CPU temperature is running cool, which means that the... That the uh, I feel the, um, uh, the, the water cooler hose sort of vibrating, so I believe it is putting water through the system here. Let me take a listen. 
So once I get the RGB configured on this, uh, all the all the colors, the lights, and everything will be, including on the video card, will be synchronized. You know, I'm not going to have it flash and and like it is now, but um, whatever color I choose, it'll be themed. You know, uh, <laughs> for having five fans, actually six, seven, for having eight, nine fans in this case, there's three in the front, there's three on the water cooler radiator, I'm sorry, two on the water cooler radiator, there's three on the video card, and there's one on the power supply. For having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fans in this case. It is bloody quiet. That is nice. Hello. Okay, let's see here. I see post. Da, da, da. No smoke. Fan installed backwards. Just kidding. I'm going to kill Tig right off. Uh, yeah, no, the uh, Roberson, the, 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 the case, um, the RGB on the case, I, I can change that. There's a, it's on the, the, so the selector, I mean, you can control it via software. But uh, in addition to that, there's a, there's a physical buttons on the back of the case that I can't get to because it's on the bottom of what you're seeing here that let me select the, the lighting mode. But uh, so currently these fans are blowing in, these fans are blowing out, and uh, let me tilt this so you can get a better view. There. Beautiful. Um, Okay. Here, let me stick the, hopefully it's, there's not too much movement noise, but let me stick the microphone inside the case so that you can hear. I have no idea what that what that sounded like because, uh, well, I'm not listening <laughs> to the headphones. Here, let me listen to the headphones. So, Freshwater Boy, uh, there are integrated dust filters on the case. Um, well, the, the, so there's there's a dust filter underneath the um, the, pa the uh, power supply. There are dust filters in front of the three blinky fans here in the front of the case, which I'm going to be changing the LED mode so they're not so blinky. Uh, there are also there's also a filter on the top of the case. Uh, where the um, uh, where, where those those water cooler fans are blowing out. Um, so yeah, it's got filters. So Zilky asks if I can play a game and stream it. Sure. I mean, I'm going to be doing that at some point. But uh, um, for now, I need to button this up, do any final cable routing changes, make sure that my RGB is configured uh, correctly, and um, so that'll that'll be when I after I shut down the stream. But here we go. Um, we have there's one hand, there's the other hand. There we go. Aww.
There, I can take a screenshot and uh, there that'll be. So, what do you prefer, the uh, the IT crowd uh, thumbnail or the actual final result thumbnail? Uh, let me know. <laughs> Oh, what did Gradia say? A newborn child. <laughs> oh, Maria, he was referring to my newborn computer. Um, but yeah, it. Uh, so, quick tally. I mean, you can look at the um, you can look at the the specifications in the video description for exactly what components I put together today over the course of these past. Uh, five and a half hours, five and a half hours. Um, and the total cost for everything you see here, <clears throat> minus the keyboard and monitor and the crappy mouse, was about $5,400. Uh, it isn't absolute top of the line, but it's close to it. Uh, it's a very robust computer that will help me serve the needs of the channel by um, uh, letting me render great big videos with slow motion processing and all sorts of other doodads, as well as uh, uh, managing multiple streams without the kind of, like you may remember in some of my streams, sometimes the audio gets, gets laggy because of something I'm doing in the background or whatever. But uh, uh, yeah, no more, this, this will be, a uh, great benefit to both the channel and to myself because I'll be able to play my Elder Scrolls at greater than 10 or 15 FPS, which will be nice. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much for sticking around with me. Um, uh, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, when I got the idea to live stream the build, I had no idea how it was going to go. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty, I was pretty confident that I was going to get the job done because you know, I've built bazillion computers before, but um, didn't know how interesting it would be because, like, there's always hiccups and, you know, you got to be patient with these things. But um, uh, once this thing is fully assembled and I take all the little protective plastics off of the tempered glass and whatnot, um, uh, I'll take some sweet pictures of it and... Uh, post them up and on uh, Twitter and maybe in my channel community um, tab. So anywho, I guess I will uh, wrap it up. Um, there's going to be another live stream tomorrow night. Uh, if you're not aware, it's been, if you didn't notice, it's been a little while since I released a Space Week video. Um, and that's because the the uh, the workload of producing those was too much for me with all the other stuff I have to do for my family and for work and and so on. So um, it was just a huge source of <clears throat> of stress for me. So um, I decided instead that instead of spending you know a full day um, uh, editing and recording and cleaning up and finding the, vid the, the clips and, and so on and so forth for a scripted Space Week video, what I would do is uh, do Space Week Live, um, where I basically tell you the same thing except not scripted, and also uh, it would allow for a live Q&A, which I really enjoy, being able to respond to the, to the viewers uh, directly. Because the the pre-scripted and edited videos they're they're great and they're they're condensed like the the information in them is nice and concise, but there's no interaction with the viewers. You, you're, I'm spewing information out there and you can either consume it or not. But with the live streams, I actually get to talk to you guys, which uh, I, I I enjoy doing that. So. Lego Saturn V, now PC. <laughs> Except I didn't live stream my Saturn V build, Zilky. In fact, I had the Saturn V here. You know what? I will be right back. I'm going to turn the light on.
So here we have ye old Saturn V standard Lego build. Um, that uh, once I get my streaming studio, I guess you could call it, once I get things situated uh, in my computer space so that I can live stream uh, more often, um, I plan to have that displayed in the background somewhere, but I am also working on, where did they go? I'm also working on, um, this is precarious, there we go. There's some ASMR for you. Anyway, uh, that is a bowl full of Legos. Um, so my daughters uh, have this huge collection of Legos that they uh, got that they accumulated from many different sets over a period of years, and uh, um, so what I did because I am I've begun working on a Falcon Heavy Lego build. This is at a one to one ten scale, uh, same as the. Uh, the, the uh, Saturn V. This, this build was designed by none other than SpaceX Centric or Cloud Licker, as you may know him. Um, and uh, it, it uh, won 10,000, well, it got 10,000 uh, votes for um, submission into the Lego, what is it called? The Lego Creative. Uh, whatever, the, the, the Lego program where you submit uh, build ideas and they either approve them or don't approve them. Well, ultimately they didn't, they didn't choose it to become an official Lego set, but that doesn't mean that you can't still build it on your own. So I went through, uh, I don't know how many thousands of Lego pieces, uh, like two and a half big boxes full of Lego pieces in order to um, uh, pick out the parts that were compatible that were needed for this uh, Falcon Heavy build and um, uh, obviously I have a lot more parts to go but I was also able to find many of the ones I needed so you know I was just trying to reduce the cost of how many parts I'm gonna have to buy on the market but anyway at some point in the future you can look forward to a live Falcon Heavy build which will probably be just as long and grueling as this PC build uh, and possibly less uh, uh, organized because I really don't know uh, uh, what I'm doing with that build so <laughs> um, but the end result will be a nice pretty Falcon uh, Falcon Heavy rocket that can sit alongside my uh, uh, Saturn V at the correct scale yeah snow kittens um, uh, I'm sorry, PC builds are um, not always thrilling to watch, but the end result is very satisfying and essential because without the PC being built, you can't use it. So <laughs> it's a necessary step. I just chose to live stream it. Uh, Lego Ideas, that's right. Unfortunately, the Lego Ideas ISS build is not 1 to 110 scale. Maybe that would have been too big. But um, uh, since yeah, since they so since they chose one to one ten for the Saturn V, that kind of became the uh, the uh, uh, the scale of choice for uh, rocket builds because they just uh, you know you can set them side by side and they're roughly the correct sizes. Anywho, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the stream. So thank you all so much for coming. And look at this, I've got a functioning PC. Um, I've still got to install Windows, install my software, you know, get, get things buttoned up. Uh, but, uh, but smoke test passed and um, we're looking good for, for uh, normal operations here soon. And with that, I bid you adieu. Keep it raw, folks.